I was the driving force that whole night. I was the reason he came back to my hotel for drinks. I was the reason he came back up to my hotel room. I was the reason his... Wow. Wow. This happened. Hazel. Hi. 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 It's not like we haven't been hanging out for the last like three hours, but. Yeah, but nice to meet you. What's up? How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm doing well. Yeah. I'm trying to get my BBC here nice and. Nice and, you know, in position. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too distracting. If I get drunk and fog and just. You wouldn't be the first person. <laughs> you definitely would not be the first person to have done that. That is. <gasps> Definitely, definitely happened before. I like it. Um, I have this amazing camera person. Uh, his name is Samaj. And he has this ongoing joke when we call it where I'm always like, I love to say it around new people that haven't met him yet. And I'll just be like, hey, where's your BBC? Um, because he's my camera person for In Melanin. And I'm mentioning his big black camera, but they are always like, what did you just say to him? I'm like, yeah, where's your BBC, babe? Like, bring me your BBC. <laughs> <laughs> he said it once, like two years ago, and now I will not let him forget it. I'm just like, oh my God, where's your BBC? I love it. Because he's a black dude too. So like they see me, they see him. And they're just like, are you asking to see his fucking penis right now? And I'm like, that too, but yeah. I mean, it'd be real hilarious if he was a white guy. Like, I know, right? Bring me your BBC. Like, what? What? <laughs> Is he mixed? What's happening here? <laughs> that happens. That's strange. You know, when the penis change colors. Yeah, my, Shores do that. I mean, it gets redder. But there's not like a, a part like on the shaft where it like changes. No. But you've seen that, right? Yeah, yeah. That happens. Yeah, no. no. My, my penis is a very consistent color. Yeah. I've been editing a lot of porn in the last six months. I think I, haven't, I think the last time I was on here was like, what, six months ago? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Uh, I've been editing a lot of porn. I've seen a lot of penises. I've seen a lot of things up close and personal and over and over and over again and zoomed up and in all of the ways. I've just seen a lot. Um, it's interesting. I'm very happy stepping behind the camera, learning so much and everything. But I, I got to say, editing porn is the most interesting part of it all. You know? Like, shooting is fun. Um, you know, producing it's, you know, a job, but then editing, it's can be annoying, but like I have a team of people that are really doing the real work and I'm kind of just there to be like, yes, no, yes, no. And to review the, so final you're product. being the director <laughs> yeah, and to review the final product. And sometimes I'm going through with the yes and the no's and like, I'm having to watch the entire movie three, four or five times. And it's crazy the things you catch on the second and third time. Because if you think about it, you know, you probably remember the first. What's your favorite movie? Like your favorite mainstream movie? I cannot answer that. You don't know what your favorite movie is? I can't. There's not one singular one. That's the problem. Well, give me one of them. Strange Days. And you've seen it how many times? A lot. And every time you see it, you learn something new, right? You're like, oh my God, how did I not catch that? Or how did I not see that? Imagine that, but with a porno. It's honestly, it's a little <laughs> I mean, you know I edit porn too, right? Yeah, honestly, yeah, I forget. You do. But like, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. I feel like for a long time I was used to editing my own stuff. That's where I learned to edit, editing my own stuff. Because, you know, the new age of porn, when I joined, was they were getting over that. You know, you're shooting only for companies. Now you kind of need to shoot for yourself. And so I had to learn every job. Um, but now being a director within Melanin, it's a little different because it's other people that I'm like critiquing. I'm used to watching myself and being like, why did you do that? How, why, you know, and now I'm watching other people like, what, what? <laughs> you know? Why did you make that choice? <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's strange, but you probably get it, huh? A lot more than I do. I've been doing this for maybe like two, three years. I mean, I created all of the content. And then I took about a year off because I had a couple of deaths in my family. And then for the past two years, I've been editing the content and we actually launched this year. So I'm super excited. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Cheers to that. Cheers to Cheers that. Cheers to that. Cheers to you year, being back too. The year of Envelopment. Um, But it's been a long time coming. I'm super excited for the world to see 
all of it. It's a, a lot of it, you know, going, going through the editing process was strange, but a lot of it was so gratifying, you know, like seeing your final product and like being like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I, I hope you never lose that fucking feeling because I can definitely tell you as someone who edits a lot not, and not just porn, like just random products here and there. There are points where I'm just like, it's, it's a struggle. And yeah. Even with my own content, sometimes it's just like, well, what I was working on while you were waiting for me is like, that should have been done hours ago. And it's a good episode. Like, it's not like, it's just. Sometimes you get in that lull of like, oh, you know, and I don't, I don't really want to. It's, it, I don't think it's the, con it's the editing. It's the process of actually editing. And it's because you know that the scene is good. And now you have to sit here and watch it over and over and over again. You know what I mean? To get that final product. I think that's what it is. That gets to us sometimes. But then what carries us through is we know that we're going to love that final product. Not only do we need it, we got to fucking finish it. We got to get it out. But also, once we're done, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Um, but I've sat... Um, my first few edits were the hardest because my editor was so used to editing my content and now he's editing my company's product that I told that I wanted to be like top of the line, you know, like just the best content that you could possibly get, you know, like shout out to Vixens, Playboy, et cetera. We're trying to model after them because they make an amazing product. Um, and so the first couple of scenes though, I shot them terribly. Like I shot them in like 2018, 2019, they're garbage. And he's trying to do his best to edit them. So we had to watch them like a hundred times, a well, hundred times. And, and they're like the worst content you've ever seen. And sometimes you can't save shit. Like yeah. I, I tell people all the time, it's like garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Like you can only polish the turd so much. You can cover, you can cover shit. Like I'm. I've gotten stuff from mainstream clients. It's just like this. I, I don't know what you want me to do with this. Like I will do my best here, but something's got to give. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I tried my best. Some of my older ones, I did still try to keep them um, just also to show an evolution because I mean, in this past six months, I've edited some pretty garbage scenes and we polished that turd as best that, as we could. But I've also polished some, or, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, tequila. <laughs> Hazel started I've, drinking before we started. <laughs> I've also edited some absolute, like, like award winners. You know what I mean? Like, if once these scenes see the light of day, um, they could be nominated. They're absolutely wonderful, thanks to the talent that was involved in them, to the scripts that were used, to my crew, to everybody, to my camera person. You know what I mean? Like, the scenes were just phenomenal. Editing, everything, you know? So, like, for me, this six months has been... Um, I think you mentioned it earlier, you know, like it's a, there's a process you're learning and you're evolving. And I had to, cause it was frustrating for me to sit down with that first batch of content. But then when we got to the second and third batch, it's like, okay, I did progress. I did learn as I went along and things got better and, and yeah, so very exciting. And it's, it's only a problem if you don't get better. That's true. That's like, true. Everyone's got to fucking start somewhere. And it's not like you went to fucking film school for this shit. Yeah, no. I I taught myself kind of everything. Well, I that's mm, that's not really nice to say. I can I do some shout outs? Can I do some shout outs? Because like yeah. honestly, um I learned I had the best teachers in the industry that have taught me everything I needed to know to run this business. It's kind of insane. Um, because I didn't go to business school. I learned from whores. Um, you know, I entrepreneurs. Learned, yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Vegas, Susie Q. Um, Powell, Charlie Hart, and like these people, like 20 years in the industry, some of them five, some of them 10, some of them 15, and they have taught me um, everything that they could. I mean, if I ever had a question about anything, they took the time to teach me. Um, I mean, I learned how to do sound on set for Michael and Susie. Um, I learned how to edit from watching um, uh, Powell back in Florida doing some of the... Um, stuff and um yeah so just amazing people amazing people and everyone that works for in melanin today they actually have degrees and they actually did go and study these things and so i'm blessed to have an amazing fucking crew that is just like so talented and they teach me like new shit every day because all i have is the dream and sometimes i guess that's really all you need people were telling me that and i'm like no 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 because i i'm very anal 
And I like, <laughs> I like, if I'm going to do something, I want to learn like every single part. So I know how to edit. I know how to do all the things, but I feel grateful that I have someone that can do it better than me that I can trust to do it. That's fucking awesome. I'm also thrilled that you were like, saw my editing stuff. And you're like, I need one of these. Yeah. Oh my God. That set up, that <laughs> set up. I'm jealous. It's just because mine is so small and you know, you need space. You know, girls like space. <laughs> yes. Space. <laughs> yes, Hazel was impressed with my gear. Yes, I am. I am big and black. I yes, you said, I thought you said your parts didn't change colors. Well, the ones I buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I wore a white strap on recently, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How was your expos, by the way? <laughs> Um, my expos was great. Went to some panels, saw some peoples, um, saw my, my whores before all the craziness. It was a lot of fun. I saw you at the pajama party. The pajama party. I was, I was a little intoxicated. Yeah, I, I know. I'm dancing and twerking all over the place with Maya, right? Maya Farrell. I think that was like, I mean, you do realize you pinned me against the wall and twerked on me for quite a while, right? I remember talking to you. I'm glad you rubbing your ass against yeah. my dick was very memorable. I remember memorable. talking to you. I remember talking to you. <laughs> I'm just like, you were twerking on me, like, because of our height difference. Like, at first, it's like, you're just kind of like, and then you're like, no, no, aimed it up so, like, your ass was just rubbing against my dick. And I'm like, I am just wearing pajama pants right now. I really don't need to be walking around this party with my fucking dick hard. <laughs> boner. Yeah. Thanks, oh, Hazel. Why not? It's like space. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thankfully, I was on shrooms and the hallucinogens were making it so I could. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That's what I remember about our combo is that you were microdosing. Uh, I was not microdosing. <laughs> you just took a bunch of shrooms? Uh, a fair amount. Fair amount? Like an eighth? Oh, uh, no, no. Not that much. You know what's crazy? I have not done, like, any um, uh, psychedelics in, like, two or three years. That's I a bummer. I want to. I do. I think it's time. Um, every time I do, you know, that third eye opens, I learn something new about myself. Some personal growth happens. Um, in the past, that's always been my experience with shrooms or acid. Um, but it's been about three or four years. I mean, I've been building the company and and everything, but um, I think it's about that time. I am doing a lot of traveling this year. Um, I've been holding my head down and really um, focusing, again, on the company, but now... We're launching. I'm going to Bonnaroo. I'm going to the Kentucky Derby. I might be going to the Super Bowl. I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to Canada. And I'm possibly hitting the Amsterdam Expos. All of that's going to be happening this year. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. You got I, a big stupid hat for the Derby? I do. I, I have one in mind. I haven't gotten it yet. Because I have to get it like custom sized for my hair. And I'm super fucking excited, though. I, I'm so, it's going to be so dramatic. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dream come true. <laughs> That's fucking wild. I'm going to be living out my Southern girl dreams this year because I feel like I deserve it. I've um, just been, like, you know, responsible. And it's time for me to party. I'm going to see Luke Combs. Country artist. Yeah, from- I, yeah, I got tickets to see him. Your confusion was amazing. I went to see Jelly Roll. I got backstage tickets to see Jelly Roll. Got to meet him and the crew. Very cool. Um, yeah, super cool. Um, his DJ is amazing. Shout out DJ Chill. Tell me about it. His crew, I guess, are, I don't know, I guess fans. I don't know. Thanks. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, they're super cool. And um, they were like, hey, we see that you listen to country music all the time. You should check out Jelly Roll. And I checked him out. And I was like, dude, he's actually pretty good. And he's like, well, if you ever want to come through and see a show, let us know. And um, I came through. And honestly, they were super accommodating. The show was amazing, though. Like, I do really fuck with his music. He's like country and alternative. And I really want to, like, sit down and pick his brain sometime, honestly, because he is such an intelligent Man, you know, like he just spoke to Congress about the um, opioid epidemic. Um, are you Googling Jelly Roll? I am. <laughs> Everybody should Google Jelly Roll. If you don't know this man, honestly, he's he's great. He's more than just a country artist. I think this man is going to be an activist. He's going to be um, a spokesperson for this time. You know what I mean? Like he's just all-encompassing of of everything that we are experiencing. Experiencing. Ah, uh, experience. Why do you make me drink and then talk, Matt? Experiencing no one, as it, humans right now. 
No one has made you drink. No one has made you drink. Oh, true. You were the one who literally, before I hit record, be like, bring that bottle over here. Literally said to me, (laughs) bring that bottle over here. And I just poured a a refill. Right. So don't give me, why you make me drink, Matt? Because it's your fault. I mean, I'm just an enabler. It's your own fault. I know, enablers. Everyone's an enabler. I, I go out. And the bartender's like, do you want to drink? And I'm like, oh, my God, you're such a bad influence. Yes, I want to drink. I mean, <laughs> it's literally their job to sell you alcohol. So, But I'm like, yeah, you're so bad, girl. Yes, give me one. <laughs> but no, Jelly Roll, amazing guy, super fun. He's actually married to Bunny, who is an ex-sex worker herself. Um, he's an ex-drug dealer. She's an ex-sex worker. He's religious, and he kind of subscribes to, you know, Jesus surrounded himself with hookers and prostitutes and the poor and et cetera. And that's kind of his message is um, he came up from all of that. And uh, he does not shun people that come from the same background. Um, Him and I have not been personally able to like have a conversation one-on-one, but I can't wait for the day because I do think that he'd have the decency or respect if we were had the opportunity to actually talk to me and uh, have a conversation. Um, but Bunny, I look up to. She's amazing. She's wonderful. Um, I think she's started a business or, or two herself. Um, so, and their marriage overall, I'm still married. And it still shocks me this far into the industry. When I tell people that I'm married, they're like, what? You're married? That's crazy. Do What do you think? He looks like my type, right? Chubby and beard and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Luke Combs and him. I I was uh when I went to his show, I told some of the guys at the show, I was like, he's like a ripoff of my boyfriend, Luke Combs, and like, that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will do for you, I will check out his music. You should. You should. Um, let's see, which one do I want you to check out first? Um, I would just son of a sinner. Okay. Yeah, Son of a Center is really good. Don't play it. I will not. I will not. <laughs> I do not want copyright strikes or Jelly Roll oh being part of my revenue. Copyright is so quick to take down stuff. I posted a video of um, a TikTok with, um, it was Ed Sheeran, um, Bruno Mars, and Chris Stapleton did a rock song together. And it didn't really get a lot of play when it came out, but it's a wonderful freaking rock song. And so I put it on my story because I saw a TikTok about it. And it took like less than 20 minutes before Instagram was like, copyright infringement. You can't have this. They're fast on that shit. They are fast. <laughs> I was like, that's freaking crazy. Yeah. No, no, Sony no. We don't play. Universal Music, Sony, they do not play. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. So do, please, please do not. Like Back in the day, we used to do this live at a strip club. And there, are, I have multiple audio-only episodes that are copyright fucking... It's not takedowns, but it's like, oh, they get 100% of the revenue from this episode. Mm-hmm. So. I, I would, used to film this at a strip club? Oh, just the audio, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. They used to pay me to do this live at a strip club. Wow. Nice. They nice. You want to know what they pay me to do at strip clubs? I'm a hookah girl in Florida at a strip club. And I actually got to work there for the first time. I had I'd not been there for a long time, like almost a year. But they called, they're like, hey, you in town? I'm like, yeah, I'm in town. What's up? They're like, we need a girl tonight. I'm like, I'll fucking be there. They they told me I'm on the plane on my way to Florida. And I get to my connection flight. And they're like, hey, are you in town? I'm like, I'm about to be. They're like, we need a girl. I'm like, when? They're like, tonight. I'm like, I'll fucking be there. I'm like, listen, I land at 7. Give me till 9 to get ready. And then I'll be at the club by 10. And I was there by 10 and I was so excited and so happy because I very, I don't, I was never a stripper, but I love the vibe of a strip club. Why were you never dancing? I, I am not a dancer. I'm not confident enough to be like, I don't know. I never got comfortable with the pole, but like, I've been told I don't need to be like, um, fantastic with the pole to be a dancer. But if I'm going to do anything, I want to do my best and I've never been able to do my best at it. So I just didn't do it. As someone who's personally experienced just working. You know that part of the job. I do. I, and I have the personality, according to everyone. They're like, you should do it. But um, so I got this job 
years ago with my friend, my best friend, Mina, Mina Carlisle, you know, the little short girl that's always with me. Um, she's a stripper, an amazing pole dancer, very talented. And she takes me into work with her one night. And I'm like, are you guys hiring for bartenders or fun door girl? And because I'm going to be moving in, living in Florida a lot more, going back and forth from LA. I'm looking for a part-time job temporarily. And they're like, no, but we have a hookah bar in the back and we're looking for girls to do the hookahs. And I was like, well, I'm Hazel Grace, you know, and they're like, well, let's introduce you to the guy. He fell in love with me immediately. I fell in love with him. And he's like, yeah, let's have you on. And it's like one of those like temp jobs. Whenever I'm in town, I can work. And so like it just kind of worked out. The club, my fans started to come there to see me. Like it's just such a vibe. Like the the customers there love me. The girls there love me. I always make good money. Um, the girls always make good money when I'm there. So like they're happy when I'm there. And it's just just it's, slapping it. Just slapping it. It's just such a vibe. Like strip clubs are such a vibe. And I, all I do is run around like, do you want a hookah? Do you want a hookah? And I twerk on random people because you know that's kind of what I do. I know. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. well aware. It's like, hi, how are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some poor security guard in the club is just watching me get an erection. Like, <laughs> like, <sighs> like for those of you who haven't seen the pictures, like I showed up in like pajama pants and a bathrobe with like no shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. And he was just like kind of pinned me against the wall. It was just like, yep. This I'm like, okay, cool. Like I tried to dance along a little bit. And we this. were vibing, Matt. Oh, it was fun. We were vibing. Oh. Reviving. Do I do I sound upset about it? <laughs> no. No. It, it was just when you were like, okay, I gotta go talk to somebody else. I'm just like, well, shit. Well, damn, left you. Yeah. Fucking blue balls. I I've heard I'm a tease. I'm not worried about it. I've heard I'm a tease. There are zero expectations, so it's not like, oh my god, she left behind. And like I was just like, oh, I'm dry. <laughs> never heard that expression before. You've never heard that one? No, I've, I've definitely heard I dry. Oh, yeah, I'm like, what? I've definitely been there before. <laughs> definitely been there before. I'm bringing back the su- Southern vernacular this year. Um, Earlier, I said to you, you've heard that um, when I said to you earlier, right? That dog don't hunt. Yep. Yeah. And then you've got bless your heart, of course. Um, Have you heard high cotton? That one I have not heard. Like, um, if I were to say, you offered me earlier Don Julio 1942. That's high cotton. That's hot cotton. That's a $200 bottle of tequila. That's hot cotton. <laughs> uh, you know? But, yeah. So, I'm bringing back the Southern Vernacular this year. That's my plan. <laughs> it's a solid move. It's a solid fucking move. <laughs> oh, it just makes me sound more like a Southern Belle. I love it. You are a Southern Belle. I know, but um, the Valley, being in Cali so much has changed me. People come up to me and they're like, are you a Valley girl? And it hurts my fucking soul. Like, I'm like, I'm from Alabama. I'm from Alabama. Are you a valley girl? You talk like a valley. You sound like a valley girl. You act like a valley girl. I'm like, I've been here too fucking long. And Matt's trying to get me to move here now. Oh, sorry. 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 I have an offer to have a free apartment here. Then why are you and not I moving here? I just don't want to take it. Yeah. It's one of my boyfriends is like, you know, if you want a place here, you know, like you get a place here. Cause literally every time I'm here, they're paying for me to have, um, you know, rental cars and, uh, hotels and et cetera while I'm here. And so they're like, you know, let's just get you an apartment here. I'm like, I don't want to fucking live in LA. <laughs> like, yeah. But just like your apartment in Florida, you don't actually have to fucking live here. Yeah. I don't live in my apartment in Florida. Honestly. Um, I get, you know, anytime you meet someone, they ask, you know, where do you live? You know, on a, I get asked that all the time. Where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? And honestly, for like the past six months to a year, I've been saying, I don't live anywhere. I don't know. I don't live anywhere. I've got a place in Florida. I've got a place in, technically in Cali. I've got friends I can stay with here whenever I want. Um, same in Florida. Same in Texas. Um, same in Alabama. Same in Georgia. Um, and so I'm just kind of all over. Um, thinking about getting a place in Vegas as well, like hooking up with one of my friends and getting a place out there um, because I'm kind of just like all over like traveling right now. And that's just kind of my focus with, you know, I don't feel like there's a point in me being stationary. But Florida's my happy place. The only nude beach that I know of 
in California is Black's Beach, and it's down a fucking mountain. You have to go down the fucking cliff. You know what I'm talking about? You go down, and then you got to climb up it after your whole relaxing day on the beach. You have to make this, like, march up the mountain to get back to your car. And Florida, you just pull up to Hallover, and the beach is right there. It's, like, under the bridge and under the road or whatever, and it's right there, and you can spend all day just naked on the beach. There's, like, a community of swingers there. And yeah, it's a fucking amazing. Hallover is my happy place. Like, you know, when people tell you like, oh, just close your eyes and go to your happy place. My happy place is naked on the beach. Hallover. In front of me, there is the ocean and the birds. Behind me, there's the B&B Hallover food truck. And I can smell the fucking greasy fucking food. <laughs> There's naked people people playing sports everywhere. There's couples hooking up over here. There's like, that is my happy place. So many flappy dongs. Lots of flappy dongs. Um, some nice tits, though. Usually really nice tits. I'm sold. Yeah, really nice tits. Where's my invite, Hazel? What the fuck? Well, oh, my God. The very the very next time you were in Florida, hit me up. I take everyone to Hallover. You can ask any. Come and spend the day with me at Hallover. You will not fucking regret it. All right. I may regret, regret being in Florida, it. but... You, um, what is your problem with Florida? <laughs> My time down there has been mixed. That happens. That happens. I mean, but LA, man, you know, honestly, there's a lot in common. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of traffic. Everything's a little pricey. You know what I mean? Um, for me though, people are friendlier in Florida. Um, and they, the city, everything doesn't close at nine, 10, 11. Things are open to like midnight, one or two. And you just got to know the right spots in LA. There's definitely 24 hour shit here. Is there? Yes. Do you ask me? No. I need to ask you, but I was out in Winneka. That's not LA. I mean, yeah, that's the I thing. Mean, LA. I mean, it's, leg- it's legally LA, but it's, it's huge. It's fucking huge. Because isn't Thousand Oaks and all that technically considered? That's LA County. Winneka is actually still part of Los Angeles. Okay. What about Calabasas? No, Calabasas is own, its own thing. Beverly Hills. Right. Own thing. Right? Own thing. Okay. That's where I was last night for dinner. I love going there for dinner. It's so... Oh, it's where, was, so where was my invite on that? Um, I never pay. Okay. So I have to like, you know, I'm going with a date usually. They can pay for me. It's cool. Yeah, they can, Matt. The um, Laugh Factory tomorrow night? Possibly. Yeah. I'll, sh- I'll introduce you to the man that pays for everything. <laughs> nice. Nice. I mean, I, I hope I don't have to do what you have to do to get paid. But I don't really have to do anything but be myself. That's the lovely thing. I'm yeah, but I can't be you. Yeah, you can't be me. It's it's hard to be this bubbly and this fun and this cute all the time. Right? All the time. Uh, it's pretty easy for me. I, I only took me a day to reload after I had my bake show. I flew in. I had uh, prep work. I had to get my entire team checked into their hotels and stuff and ready. And then we had a day to get ready for our big show. We had our fourth annual big show for in Melanie. And we had these cool teas in remembrance of it. And um, we had 12 girls at this year's show. Actually, I think we only had about 10 show up. So, yeah. And that's why we always plan for more. Well, um, yeah, that's, that's how the, and, that's how it has to be in this yeah. industry. So we had 10 girls, which is an amazing turnout. They were all super fun. It was a great time. My crew really fucking delivered. Um, we're going to try to get um, a contract to be streamed through a cam site next year. Why do you need a contract? Why can't you just do it? Well, we want to give them like exclusive streaming rights to our, because this is our fourth annual bake show. Next year will be the fifth, and we're hoping to make this a regular thing for new girls in the industry. Right, and you didn't so, even bring me baked goods. I didn't. You know what? Next year, I got you. You know, and I had a lot left over, and I was like, "Where do I take these?" Because usually, I donate to a shelter in in Florida, in Miami. This is my first time doing it in LA, and every shelter I called was like, "We don't accept stuff like that. They accept sealed goods. You can't just bring stuff that you cook to them." So well, no, yeah, because no one would take it. So I because in LA we might be poisoning the homeless. Yeah, I'm like that's crazy. But um, so the girls just took all of the baked goods. But I'm sorry because I took some to X3 or to XBase the next day after because the bake show was on the um um 18th. On the 19th, I took some in. Did I not see you on? Oh no, that was X3. Um, yeah, that I, was X3. Um, but yeah, no, we had so many left over, and I felt so bad. Um, but I don't know why I didn't bring you any. But it's okay. I just got you a cheesecake. I know. You got me. I owe you though. Next time, it's okay. I owe you. Yeah, it's okay. You got me cheesecake. That's all that matters. Mm-hmm. 
I made bad jokes about it the whole time. Did you? You were there. I hope. You did. <laughs> You're like, that's how bad they were. Hazel didn't that's even how, acknowledge. No, I, seriously, though, they were bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> they so, were bad. I was just making bad jokes the whole time. Yeah, they were bad. They were, bad. Just, they were so bad, Hazel's just ignoring that they happened. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, I do love that she gave me a, like a pity giggle at the time. I always do. I'm a kind person. I'm a kind person. Ouch. <laughs> There it is again, the pity giggle. Actually, the giggle is always real. There's a butt there. But there's there a butt. <laughs> there's a butt coming. I smell it. I smell the butt coming. I didn't know what the butt was. <laughs> but you wanted to say it. You, I did. I did. Like, but, 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 did. but those were pretty lame jokes. <laughs> oh, the oh my god! But that was um. I had some um. What was it? Blue blueberry like, cobbler white chocolate cheesecake. Yeah, it was fucking good. I should have tried yours, though. You should have. I ate that bitch fast, though. Mm. It was so much smaller than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, uh, same. Yeah. It came out, I'm like, this is doesn't, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Guess I'll eat my tiny cheesecake. I think we've all been there. Well, not you, but a lot of us girls have been there where it just comes out a lot smaller than we thought it would be. Just kind of got to go with the flow. Yeah. <laughs> This is why I just, I'm up front about it. It's like, it's average. Yeah. It's average. Yeah. <laughs> You're Knuff. You're Knuff. Have you seen the Barbie movie? Oh, yeah. I saw it on Mushrooms. You're Knuff. Oh, wow. How did you like the America speech on Mushrooms? Oh, it was good times. It wasn't, it wasn't intense. Her whole little speech of, of everything. America. What's her name? America's America Ferreira. Ferreira. How was that on Shrooms? It wasn't like intense or anything? No. Nah, no. Nice. It's good. There was a- for me, the the entire movie, that was the most intense part of the movie for me. It literally made me cry. Oh, yeah. No, no. It was definitely an intense thing. But, you know, I'm part of the patriarchy, so. Yeah. I don't have to relate. I don't actually relate to I, I Fuck you. <laughs> I felt everything she was saying. I was like, well, damn, bitch. Don't come from my heart and soul like that. No, no. I, I enjoy this goddamn kids movie. What are we Oh, doing? that was not a kids movie. That was. I know. I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy this fucking kids movie what the fuck are we doing here like it was way too intense that movie was not a kids movie it was not it was everything so political these days it fucking sucks oh everything that everything that's not supposed to be political is political everything that's supposed to be political is like a legit joke i'm like <laughs> yeah but i appreciate that they fucking took a t- a toy movie a toy movie and made it subversive yeah and it's one of those things where like the message in 2024 shouldn't still be subversive. Like that should not, the, the thoughts and that were expressed in that movie shouldn't be subversive political thoughts at this point. Like that shit should have been accomplished by yeah, now. By now, but. And like, I was, I walked out of it like on two months of like, on one hand, I appreciate the message. I appreciate that they took a, toy movie and made it subversive on the other hand it's like i really hate that they had to make a toy movie to get this message across but i also don't know how they would have delivered that message without it being the barbie movie yeah yeah i don't know and then with it coming out so close to oppenheimer which had a completely different met like super like also very political but also like I mean, historically political. That one, I saw that one first. I was almost, I was actually way more interested in Oppenheimer than Barbie. And to me, some of the most interesting parts, because I'm like a historical nerd, were the conversations with... um, Like Einstein and... No, who was the president at the time? He had a meeting with him during the movie. FDR? I actually haven't seen Oppenheimer. Oh my God, you you have seen Oppenheimer. No, I really wanted to. I actually wanted to do like the full... Barbieheimer on screen. Yeah, you were supposed. Yeah, what were you doing, Matt? I was Everybody be- was on that wave. You got to do Barbie and Oppenheimer. I, I was being influenced by the girl I went there with. Oh yeah, she's like, I, I don't want to do both. I didn't even want to do Barbie. I was convinced to do Barbie. I wanted to do Oppenheimer, and I did Oppenheimer first, and it was fucking phenomenal. Plus, the lead in Oppenheimer kind of obsessed with him, like kind of Killian like- Murphy. Yeah, kind of obsessed with him. And you know what makes me more obsessed with him? He's one of those celebrities that does not like social media. Like, does not have any accounts, does not, like, associate with things. And, like, 
part of me that's like, you know, he's unattainable to me. And that makes me want him more. He's probably such like a goody two shoes that he's like, I don't want this black porn star bothering me, but like, please let me suck your dick. <laughs> please let me suck your dick. Just a little. Just a little. Just one time. And I will not tell anyone. You just want to play just the tip with him, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a tip. That's it. And um, him and a few people that it's like, okay, I I know I would love you. And if you knew me, you'd love me. Because, like, honestly, same. I hate social media. I am not a fan. Um, I just like to kind of live my life and do my thing. Especially now with my, like, business taking off and everything's like, I'm around the right people and doing fun things and living my life. And it's like, the last thing I want to do is go on social media and update everyone else about what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Um, but sometimes you have to do it. I'm jealous that they don't have to do it. I just want to suck his dick. I just want him to see my tweet and like, let me suck his dick. There's that Mexican OT saying like, if you see this. Well, what you should do, <laughs> I'm sure Killian's agent has a Twitter. You should at mention his agent. What do I say that's going to get his attention? Be like, I, I want to suck your client's dick. I don't think that's going to work, but I'll try it. I mean, I'll try it. I'll try it. I'll I'm, try I'm, anything. I honestly just. I could die a happy woman if I could just have his penis in my mouth once. He's so beautiful and just so, like, just so beautiful. I mean, that's what every man wants is just someone that was like, all I want in this world is their penis in my mouth. Yeah, and then I will never talk to you again. I will never bother you again. Like, nope. You know what I mean? Like, I got what I needed. We're good. I'm, I'm going to find out for you who Killian Murphy's representation is. Please. I'm just, you guys, all of 2024, I'm just trying to have fun. So, like, send me send me some fun people, and let's have some fun. You're here, aren't you? Yeah. I want to work with, I want to eat Cherie DeVille's pussy. I'll mention it to her next time I talk to her. Can you? I mean, she knows me, but, like, it's just, you know, one of those things where it's, like, it's hard to, um, I want to eat her pussy, and who else? What are the pussies that I want? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Cecilia Lyon. That's going to happen soon, I hope. Alexis Tay. Um, Demi Sutra. Kira Neor. I've still never had Anna Fox's pussy. Um, we are so Ebony breaking. Mystique. We are so breaking cardinal rules right now. Are we? Well, because I, I almost, I generally actively avoid asking people who they want to work with. Do you? But, oh, well, you didn't but, ask me. I'm just telling you guys. I mean, if you want to do this. <laughs> If you want to do this off camera, I'm all about. Yeah. All about it. Yeah. Okay. So I have his agent's phone number for you. He has two agents, actually. His agent's phone number? Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm not going to call it out on the air. Oh, because I'm like, ah, send it to me. <laughs> I, I will just let you look at his IMDb Pro page. Okay. After the show. Yeah. Okay. Pro tip. If you have IMDb Pro, you get people's representations phone numbers. Okay. I mean, I'm sure you'll get it, his fucking agent's assistant, but. But yeah, we had our big show, fourth annual, back to that. <laughs> After we're done with all the all um, the genitals you want in your mouth. We had a kissing booth and a confessional booth where all the genitals got touched. We had a twerking contest. We played the, like, the. Where was my invite on this? You, I don't. I was so busy planning the show. I was I had 12 girls to wrangle up and get everything prepared for. I saw you multiple times during Xmas. Not Did one. Did you not see me post about the show? Why didn't you text me and ask I didn't see through? I didn't see a post. Didn't Why are, you're not following in Melanin then? Follow in Melanin on Instagram and Twitter. Follow in Melanin on Instagram and Twitter. I'm sure I'm following. Um this. because you would have saw some of my posts about my girls. Well, I was also very busy all week. Yeah, same. Listen, I didn't have the time, you know, to like, but I, I will in the future um, send out more of a personalized message to my friends in the industry that I'm hosting these events because ultimately, like, um, I would like for a lot of my friends to see what I do because, like, only the women that I work with, the models I work with see what I do, but the people, like, my friends in the industry that I've learned from don't really see what I'm doing. You've learned from me? Aw. I'm actually, um, my manager, I guess I could say his name, Jody, he's awesome, um, wants me to start a YouTube channel, but it's going to be Porn and Politics with Hazel. Cool. And I learned a lot from you, and I'm excited to uh, to try it out, for sure. It was, it was funny. We were talking a fair amount about social media before we got on air, and Hazel was eventually just like, I, can you please stop? 
<laughs> yeah. I hate social media. It's I had to quit using Twitter because of what he was going through earlier. Like the trolls, the fucking trolls. He, you have the patience though. And I don't have the patience. And I get like, oh, and I'm like, all right, you're tweaking my mood. And um, bless your heart. I'm just going to go, you know? <laughs> wow. I hope that bless your heart was for the trolls, not me. For the trolls. Oh. Trolls, bless your heart. I'm just going to go. Because, yeah, like Twitter, like, they just say stupid shit. Like, they're just trying to provoke a response. And it does provoke something in me. And I'm like, okay. Um, I don't, it doesn't provoke a response. It just provokes something where I'm like, okay, now I need to disengage from this. Because it's not for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. At least I have that self-control. Right. I don't have a lot of self-control. Um, I, I'm aware. <laughs> but at least I have that self-control. <laughs> I, I'm well aware. I, I guess, I don't know. Can we tell the story of what happened after the last time you were on? Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. So did we go to the show after or did I come over the next day? No, no. We went to the show after. We after wrapped. We wrapped in the one. We went to the comedy store. Okay. We wrapped and we went to the comedy store together, you guys. And I think we were supposed to meet with Alexis, but she didn't make it. But we met with Joe. Yeah, we met with Joe and uh, Haley Spades. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I remember is getting trashed. I don't remember any of the comedians. No, that girl was there that night. The the kind of famous Netflix special girl. Wasn't she there that night? Taylor Tomlinson? Silver, Sil- Sarah Silver, whatever. Sarah Silverman? Yeah. I told, this was six months ago. I forgot the lineup. I think it was Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Um, But yeah. Please tell them what happened. That's all I remember. I was trying to get out what I remembered. That's all I remember from the night. So we did a healthy amount of drinking on here, per usual. And then we rolled over to the store. And we kept drinking. And we kept drinking. Of course. And at one point, I got separated from the group because I ran into some other comics I know. And I ran up to the belly room to, like, watch one of my friends do roast battle. And all of a sudden, I get a text from you, like, I'm in the bathroom, but I'm okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm pretty sure I still have the text, so let's uh let's go to the rec- official record. So I'm not. I did that to my little sister in New York. I took my little sister to New York for the first time for Halloween. Um, I've taken her like everywhere, but I'm like, okay, let's do New York next. We go for Halloween, and we're doing all of these little things. Um, and we go, we had three escape rooms planned cause she's big on those. And I had friends from Florida that were in town for their family's weddings that were like meeting up with me. Mina was in town. My little sister was in town. So we're like, cool, let's all go and do this escape room. We get to where it's like the third night. We're at the second escape room and I get, I'm, I've been drinking all day, walking the streets of New York, just drinking all day. And, um, we're like, we start like you know, you're about to start the escape room. They put you in the thing. And I'm like, hey, I need to go to the restroom. I go to the restroom. Y'all, my head is spinning. Like, my head is spinning. And I'm like, okay, your little sister is out there. She's here to have a good time. You have to pull it together and go out there and have a good time with your little sister and help her get through this escape room. And you guys, I told myself that 45 times. And by the 50th time that I was saying that to myself, the escape room was over and they were back at the bathroom knocking on the door. Like we were wondering what had happened to you. Like I literally sat in that bathroom for an hour, an hour and 30 minutes while they were doing the escape room. Like when they started, I went in. And then when they finished, I was still in there like hanging over the thing with a trash can in front of me, like trying to pull myself together. <laughs> well, a uh, comedy store night for sure. I didn't puke. I did not puke. The comedy store night, you definitely were in there for at least an hour. I was in there for an hour? Because uh, I think I always I, do that when I'm fucked up. I'm like, let me separate myself from people and pull it together. But by that point, it's too late to be pulled together. Like, I just need to go. <laughs> yeah. Look, fucking, I, I think Joe texted me. He's like, uh, Hazel's been in the bathroom a while. And at 11.22, I text you, you okay? I get a yes, LOL. <laughs> you got to put the LOL. I ask you where you are. One word response, bathroom. <laughs> oh, God. I, I just am like, okay. And then you respond with, sorry, I'm going to need a minute. Please enjoy yourself. Sorry, I'm going to need a minute. 
so while you're like suffering, you're still thinking of my good time. Want, yeah, I didn't want you guys to like worry about me ultimately. Like I went in there for again, I go to the bathroom because I'm like, okay, I'm getting to a point where like let me not be around other people. I don't want to bring you guys down. I don't want you guys to be worried about me. If you needed to be worried about me, I would have been like, hey, come with me to the bathroom. I need help. But like, yeah, I'm like, go have fun. Cause I felt like we were having fun before I dipped out. Oh yeah. And I didn't want y'all to stop having fun on account of me. So I'm like Joe and Haley left. Oh, did they? Yeah, they left. Oh, okay. They just up and left. Okay. Well, yeah, I was just like, you guys, you were upstairs with your friend and they just dipped. I'm like, as long as you're good. And you took me home, right? I took you here, yes. Yeah. I slept here. Yeah, on my couch. I forgot about that. I did pass out on the couch until the next morning. Yep. And it's just like, just let me know when you're ready to leave. I don't think I'll be able to party, unfortunately. LOL. I'm sobering up. LOL. Me? Yeah. I respond with, all good. I can roll downstairs. No problem. Please have fun is yeah. your response. <laughs> I invite you upstairs to watch the show. You go, yes, I'll let you know when I'm ready to leave the bathroom. LOL. <laughs> I respond with, okay. Did I ever come back to see the show? No. 20 minutes later, you go, where are you? I think that's when I finally pulled it together. I'm like, okay, I I I'm upstairs. This, I can leave this bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, where are you? Upstairs. Back downstairs. I'm like, outside or by the bathroom? And you're just like, I may Uber home. I can pay for yours, LOL. Back back at the front. I'm like, I'll drive us. Okay, LOL. That was my cue to stay. Because I don't remember that part. But he, I literally, that's always my move when I go out with people. Because I feel bad. I'm like, if I rode with you, you rode me. I'm like, let me Uber you home because I got to go home now. But. When you said, I'll drive us, I'm like, okay, I'll chill. Because he well, can get me to where I need to be, and I don't got to worry about anything. So you drove us back in my in my rental. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't think you can leave the car in the lot overnight anyways. True. True, the car. Yeah, I get... Because I would have left that bitch. Yep. You guys, I'm a responsible drinker. If I'm fucked up, I'm Ubering home and I'm leaving my car wherever the fuck my car is, and I will come back and get my car the next day. If you're drinking, please do that. Like... <laughs> Um, leave your car where your car is if, and just Uber, just Uber. Cause usually Uber will bring you back to your car the next morning too. I mean, if you pay them, yes. Yes. They'll bring you back to your car the next day. Except in LA, your car will probably not be there. Your, your car will be towed. Yeah. Your car, my car has been towed more times in the state of California than anywhere in my entire life. I never I've got, got to the bottom why you don't want to move here. Oh my God. It's just because your car keeps getting towed. And, and I was parked on the street during an event one time. I want to say it was like an XRCO or something. And someone took off my fucking window because I didn't. Pull it in. You know, when you park on the street, you're supposed to, like, push your thing in. I didn't do that, so it was, like, out. And they fucking took it off. Yeah. Um, and drove off. Um, L.A. and the traffic. I had to I had to commute from San Diego to L.A. Um, every day for four years. Almost every day. About three to four or five, sometimes five times a week for four years. San Diego to L.A., the five, the 405, getting up here, the 101. In the morning and in the afternoon. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. So if I lived here, I guess it would be easier. I'd be in LA. I wouldn't be in San Diego, but I prefer to live in San Diego to LA and just do the drive just because living in LA, living in LA. I love it here. I mean, I would if I were you too. I think the last time I was here, we went downstairs. We were like heading, I think this was on the way to the comedy show. We ran into like this famous black model. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wasn't she my neighbor? Yeah, it was your neighbor. And like I was at the uh, Steak 48 in Beverly Hills last time I was here in December, and I ran into Smokey Robinson. And I just, I, I mean, LA's got its benefits. <laughs> like, literally, you were hitting on my neighbor. You're like, girl, you're so <laughs> she was, fine. She was flirting with me too. She's hot. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen her since. She's hot. She's hot. Oh, no, she was hot. I was just, maybe oh. she's avoiding us. <laughs> it's like, oh, those porn people. Because <laughs> I, I have to imagine that my neighbors have some clue what I do at this point. Yeah. I'm lo one of the longest running tenants in this building. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you know, the amount of people that have come in and out of this motherfucker. I think she still follows me, though. Nice. Do you remember her name? No. I don't either. I lose track of people. Like, I don't remember if they follow me or unfollow me or whatever. But I always assume, I'm like, once they figure out what I do, they're going to unfollow me. I don't remember her name. I don't even know what to type in. We'll figure it out when we're off. Yeah, we'll figure it out. She was on one of those shows. Yeah, she was on a reality show or something. Yeah. 
Speaking of reality shows, oh my goodness. I got into the Housewives, you guys. But of Salt Lake City. What? It's like it's real juicy white girl tea. Like Mormon girl tea. It sounds horrible. It's it's so juicy. <laughs> sounds horrible. It's so juicy. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. My husband, all men are the same way. They're like, oh, that sounds terrible. You get two, three episodes in and you're like, she did what? That's stupid. Like you get into it. You get pulled into it. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to, Matt, we're going to do Salt Lake City. You want to tell me? All right. I'm going to tell you one line. This is what's going to pull you in, right? Right? So there's all these women. This is one black woman, right? And she is married to her step grandfather because her grandmother left in her will that she marry her husband and inherit the church because they're and everything else. She wanted her granddaughter to inherit everything she had as the owner of this church, et cetera. So in order to do that, she felt that her granddaughter needed to marry her husband. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't even really talk about it. There's like a bunch of drama where one of the girls brings it up and she's just like, oh, yeah, you fucked your grandpa. Like, it's such a juicy, like, show. Matt, we're going to watch like two episodes. And if you're not in after two episodes, I'll let you go. Oh, you're going to leave my house if I don't? Okay. I don't know about leaving your house, but I won't make you watch it anymore. You're like, I'm still staying. <laughs> I <don't, laughs> I'm not going anywhere. but <laughs> Still staying, but. <laughs> but I won't make you watch it anymore. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. I think that we should start a real housewives of porn. Wouldn't it be the real house husbands in most cases? No, I could name seven amazing housewives of porn. I are, would love are, to be one, but they, got are, Brandy Love is Okay, but, so, but they're actual performers. Yes. Brandy Love, um, Scarlet Scandal, um, me. Um, <laughs> um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Who else is married? Now I can't think of any of them. But there's a lot of women in this industry. That have Kenzie been Taylor's long, married. Yes, that have been on, in for a long time that are married. Um, 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 Adam, 22, and his, they're married, him and his wife. Um Everybody I'm naming is, like, at a much higher level in the industry than I am. But, like, ultimately, even without me, they would make a great, like, real housewives of porn. You know what I mean? I think that should be a thing. I think also that our industry is being more and more, not necessarily normalized, but, like, accepted in the mainstream of all of the TikToks and everything. Like, it's just we have more exposure than we ever have in the past. And that would not be a bad idea. Real housewives of porn. Riley Reed is married. Like, that's your lineup right there. Riley Reed, Stormy Daniels, Brandy Love, um, uh, Scarlet Scandal. Like, that's your lineup right there. That's going to be juicy as fuck. I don't know how much that would help the image of the industry, though. I think it would because um, what happens in the Real Housewives episodes is you you do see all their catty fights, but you also see that these women have real jobs and they run businesses. And even if they don't, they're really good parents to their kids or like dedicated moms. You see a lot more like it's it's like in passing, but the whole show is not their fights. Sometimes it's just them getting together for events and then like, right? So I think it would show that not only are we shooting porn, but Riley Reed runs a business and ha um, um, Adam 22's wife runs a business and has a kid. Um, Scarlet Scandal is training to be a, um, a heavy or bodybuilder and is in porn. And Brandy Love, 20 years in, is still happily married to her husband and still shooting. I think it would do more good than bad because it would show the basics that they already know, but it's also going to show that we're a lot more than that, especially when you're a wife in this industry. It will get traffic just from the red pill dudes. Yeah. 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 Wait, you think I <laughs> the amount of trolls that would come out of the woodwork for that shit. Oh yeah. Real. Oh, cause, and they assume all of our husbands are cucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, no, they're just kind of happily married. <laughs> Has your husband ever sat in on you what, like with another dude? You know, it's funny because they always assume that. In my case, it's actually the exact opposite. I'm a cuck. I've watched him fuck porn stars and fuck people. I mean, I'm porn stars not, are people. Yeah. I would rather watch him fuck someone than he, he would ever watch me fuck someone. He does watch my scenes. If I'm not home, you know, and he doesn't have anyone there, then, like, he'll watch my scenes. But, um, No. He doesn't sit in while I'm getting late. That's right. <laughs> like, 
Well, it's not weird if people are into it. Yeah, no, it's not weird if I've done it. So it's not weird. Like, <laughs> you just admitted like 30 seconds ago. It's like, well, that actually turns me on. So you're calling yourself a weirdo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost everyone I know who is married to a performer has never sat in and physically been there while they've been involved with someone else. And I mean, especially on set. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, no one. No one is going to let you bring the significant other to a fucking set. To a set. porn set. No, yeah. you're at work. Right. You don't get to bring your husband to work. You don't get to bring your wife to work. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Just no one's going to allow that. Male casting couch is launching. And so it's going to be interesting to me to see, like, um, like some of them really fully understand. Because they don't understand. Like, you don't get to do shit like that. You don't bring your partner to work. You don't just bring your friends. It's not like a free-for-all. We're shooting porn. Let's all have fun. And Like, you know, it's just not like that. Um, not at all. Like, if you are not required on that set, we don't want you there. At all. Mel Casting Couch, I'm inviting extra people, though. I want to put the pressure on these guys. I want to see how you can perform in front of as many people as possible. And I want you guys being, like, if you're there, I want you distracting, like, being distracting throughout the scene. You know what I mean? I'm, like, the main um, interviewer. Oh, you want to be in porn? How old are you? What makes you think you can do this? Blah, 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 blah. Here's your talent. Um, and then I want the commentary throughout from my crew, almost like whispering loudly to each other. And like this guy can tell we're talking about him or straight up saying, is that all you can do, bro? Is that all you can do, bro? Are you? I don't think you're going to make it. We're five minutes from the end of this scene and you're struggling. And like, you know what I mean? Like, I really want to put the pressure on them because I want to flip the casting couch are you hiring security for this shit? Oh, yeah, of course. Because <laughs> Everyone's being screened. It's well, a whole process. Oh, well, obviously, you have to. But I could definitely see someone who doesn't quite understand what's going on. And, and then when I'm like, oh, dude, this dude can't even get his dick hard. Losing their shit. Well, they'll get over it. Well, and, that, and I'm going to use that scene. That's my thing, though. And like, you, I'm going to use it no matter what. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? If you embarrass yourself, that's on you. Because I'm going to have security. I'm going to have an entire crew of team of people that will be able to subdue you until the cops get there and arrest you. And then I'm still going to use that scene. And it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> and um, I can't wait. Um, but, yeah, no. I'm prepared for it to go. I'm prepared for tears. I'm prepared for anger. I'm prepared for all. I'm prepared for a few guys to actually come out on top. Let me know. I'll show up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pretend to be a PA for a day. I'm actually looking for suggestions for the questionnaire. All right. If you have any questions that you think I should ask these guys, send them to me. All right. Yeah. My friends are already coming up with a lot of them. They're very excited to ask these guys questions. My, my first question always is like, what the fuck makes you think you could do this? That's my question. That's going to be my first question. Hello, welcome to Mel Casting Couch. Oh, you want to be a porn star? What makes you think you can do this? <laughs> like, what the fuck makes you think you can do this? Well, and then it's not just dropping off dick, you know that, right? So I want you to meet my camera guy, my lighting guy, my sound guy, my PA, my talent coordinator, my production manager. They're all gonna be here watching you. This scene is 30 minutes long. I need to pop at 30 minutes, not before. And not too much longer after. You know what I mean? Like, this is a process. Like, they don't know that. And I'm excited to let them know. And, like, the thing is, back in the day with the casting couch, the actual casting couch, the new, young, naive girls would be sitting there. And they got talked into doing this and being told they were going to make this money. And then they would be straight up say to the girl, oh, you're trying to make some money for college, right? And you need money for this. You need money for that. Oh, Oh, so take off your shirt then. I'll give you this for that. I'll give you this for that. And that's kind of what I'm going to do to them. Like, you're a piece of me. I'm only going to pay you if you can do if you can do this as a male talent. Can you dig her down good, make her come, and come on time with my entire crew in the room? Because if you can't, you're not going to get this paycheck, honey. See, so you're much nicer than I would because the first question would be, what the fuck makes you think you can do this? And the second question, right after that, is, pull your dick out now. Get hard you now. Thank you for that note. That's going to be, pull your dick out right now, and then we're going to continue this interview. <laughs> yeah. Pull your dick out now. Get yourself hard. I've said that before in real life, though. Pull your dick out right now. I want to see it. <laughs> in a private setting, that's always a nice thing to hear. It oh. is, right? Yeah, it's pull like. Pull your dick out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Pull your dick out. <laughs> I, nothing's hotter than, like, enthusiastic consent like that. Yeah, enthusiasm is hot. Yeah. It was very hot. Mm, I had some good sex in Chicago recently. No, where that was in D.C. I think it was in D.C. You got fucked so good you didn't even know where you were? Yeah, I don't even know where it was. It was so good. It was French dick. It was French dick. 
Tell the story. It wasn't even supposed to happen. Like, okay, so like, and he wants to try out for male casting couch, y'all. <laughs> so I, I feel like he has an unfair you guys advantage. Might see this dick soon. Um, no, like, okay, so I went to see him, and I got, I got like our date mixed up, and he actually had another girl over. He had another girl over, and the day before we were supposed to meet, and I show up at his house, and I'm a day early. And I walk in on him and the girl. They're super friendly. We're like talking. I'm like, fuck, okay. And then like um, uh, the next day, I'm like, okay, well, you know what happened? He's like, oh, she was in love. And like, I'm a cuck. So I'm like asking him, like, I know you fucked her. Like, tell me what happened. Like, I'm not jealous. What happened? And he's like, oh, yeah, she's cool. She, like, she loved it. I taught her a new move. And he did the backwards fuck thing. Have you ever seen it where like the girl is like laying like this, right? And then the guy um, he's like this. Like these are his legs, and then, like this is the front of his body. Is this in frame? Oh, right. So like <laughs> this is the girl, right? And I'm like laying here. This is the, my head. These are my legs. This up here is his head. These are his legs. He puts his legs on the floor, and his dick in you, like that, that in you, right? And he, his hands are on the floor, and his legs are up on the couch. Does that make sense? I know it's hard to explain, and he's fucking you like that. Like from on top, but down. That feels like way too much effort. No, but it wasn't. And it happened so smoothly. Cause I'm asking him, he's telling me he did it to her. And I'm like, well, just show me. So like we fuck. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool. So like we fuck, we have a good time. But then like I go home and I'm like, no, this dude's chill. Like let's get together for drinks. And we get together and we go to a speakeasy. I love a speakeasy. I love like a cool, chill underground space. Like really talk to someone and meet someone and get to know them. Oh yeah. And oh, we gotta go to one soon. I love speakeasies, babe. Okay. Are you down? Yeah. I love a speakeasy. I'll tell you all my deepest, darkest secrets. You haven't already. <laughs> I have. Um, but no, so we're like doing that. And um, I think he seduced me because like I was not trying to fuck him again. You know what I mean? Like that was not my plan. Like it's like I'm not trying to give you free pussy, but I'm like, okay. But you failed. I failed. I have no fucking self-control. I failed. We're at a speakeasy. So obviously I'm drinking and he's fucking got this French accent and he's so hot. And um, I remembered the sex from the day before. And I'm like, fuck it. Let's go get more drinks. Somehow, we end up getting more drinks at the bar at my hotel, which places us only an elevator away from my room. <laughs> so then I'm like, all right, all right, we're getting drinks at the hotel bar. And I'm like, you want to come back to my room? Like, fuck it, you know? And then so we get back up to my room and we're just talking, right? Just talking. And then comes the line from me. I'll take your dick out. <laughs> just pull your dick out. Just pull your dick out. And so he pulls his dick out. And I'm, we're doing the super chill thing where he's like laying on the bed. His head's on the pillow. And I'm laying across his lap. And I'm like just kind of rubbing it. And I'm like, pull your dick out. He pulls it out. And I'm just like, I'm, he's talking. And I'm just like kind of holding it in my mouth like a pacifier, if that makes sense. One of my favorite moves. It's like if you've ever had a chill girlfriend, you know this move. You're playing video games. You're watching TV. You're doing something very relaxing. She just comes up. She lays down. She's just sucking it. Like super chill. Not like not like sucking it. But like she just got it in her mouth. It's kind of holding it there. You look like you're thinking about it, Matt. Oh, no, I'm just thinking about, like, the last person I was involved with who was not chill, who while I was fucking editing just pulled my pants out and sat on it. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done that. Like, yeah, I was dressed much like this. Yeah, just, she's just like, like, like. She's like, sit up for a second. I'm like, what? And just pulled my fucking pants out and, you know. Sat on it. And just fucking sat on it. No, I was thinking more chill. You've had more chill girlfriends, right, that just kind of suck it while you're laying there? I, chill girls don't fuck with me. It's such, oh, you got to get your chill girl. Well, I introduce know. me to one, Hazel. Yeah. Introduce chill me to girls, a chill girl. I, sometimes they just want to lay there and like put it in their mouth. So I'm just like laying there. I told him to continue talking because we're having a full on conversation. And I'm like, keep talking. And I'm just. Keep talking. Keep talking. You know, and like, I don't want to. It's not like a, a move to do anything, but like, you know. I mean. You know, once my penis is in someone's mouth, like something's happening. Like, no, like we're having this conversation. I mean, I can still have a conversation. I don't want the conversation to end. I just want the conversation to continue, but with your penis in my mouth. Oh, I'm I'm saying like I could still talk. Like hell, when she was riding me, I was still like, I need to get this edit done. Like, <laughs> I, I need to get this. Oh, that feels good. 
Mm-hmm. Stop, please. Stop. I need to get this edit done. Me and um, Sarah Lace did a double blow job in the car the other night, too. And the guy kept driving. Well, uh, good. I'm glad he didn't crash. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, fucking. Um, yeah, I was just like kind of sucking his dick. And then eventually I kind of sat on it. And like, again, I was not planning to have sex with this guy. I was just like, oh, he's cool. He wants to, like, he's a fan. He wants to work for Mail Casting Couch. He's a fan of, of Hazel, et cetera. And I'm like, you know, usually I don't give in to that. Um, but damn, I don't know what it was, Matt. I gave in. Dick was good, though. Worth I mean, it. you had already had the dick. And there's alcohol. And Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we had a super chill date. Like, you know what it is for me? Like, people are always wondering, like, how do you get Hazel? How do you just get Hazel without having to, like, try too hard? The answer is not trying too hard. I was the driving force that whole night. I was the reason he came back to my hotel for drinks. I was the reason he came back up to my hotel room. I was the reason his penis was in my mouth. And he didn't ask. He wasn't pushy. He wasn't. He was just being himself and talking. And that alone was like, I'm just looking at him getting all turned on. Like, you don't have to do any. There's nothing you can say that will turn me on more than you just being yourself and me being turned on by that. You know what I mean? If I like your vibe and I like hanging out with you, I'm probably going to want your dick in my mouth at some point. Like, it's not even a thing. It's just an unconscious, like, oh, I like hanging out with this person, but his dick would taste good. You know what I mean? (laughs) Good to know. (laughs) As you've, like, invited me out to, like, three things tonight. What are we doing, Matt? What are we doing, Matt? Right. Hey, so are you trying to tell me something? Are you trying to tell the audience something on the internet? <laughs> You're trying to tell the the internet guys, something? be chill, guys. That's your way into my panties. Just be chill. Oh, I meant specifically about me. I'm, are you trying to tell the internet something? I don't know, Matt. What are we doing, Matt? <sighs> Brandon's going to have to re-record your parts. <laughs> No, if I embarrass myself, you have my full permission to post it. (laughs) I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Cheers. I mean, I'm not afraid to not be perfect when I'm drinking. I'm drinking. And I made it clear in the beginning of this episode that this is all your fault. Okay. She has poured her own alcohol except for the first one. It's pretty clear that it's not your fault, but I'm still going to say it's your fault. (laughs) So good. So good. I'm pretty sure he offered me like a non-alcoholic option. And I was just like tequila. I mean, I, I, I vaguely did. I was like, there's non-alcoholic. I'm like, there's (laughs) non-alcoholic options here. I do that for my girls at the bake show. I do. Um, and this is usually, you know, this is an insider secret. Um, cause we don't do this during cam. Um, but the girls have the option to have mimosas. Um, but I always have the Martinelli's. Sparkling, yeah, yeah, I love that shit. It's so good, right? I had all six bottles still left after the show this year. No one touched a drop of it. <sighs> yeah, they were just like mimosas. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Besides, apparently hanging out with me a bunch. What else you got going on? Out here in LA, um, after X Three X Biz X Biz Awards, my big show. I'm chilling. I'm hoping that we get to do some stuff. I'm here for a couple more days. Um, kind of just enjoying the city. Um, then I'm back to Florida. And then, um, like I said, I have a lot going on this year. Bonnaroo, um, Kentucky Derby. Well, the next up would be the fucking Super Bowl, wouldn't it? Yeah, the Super Bowl is going to be next. And But we don't know because we've got the Detroit Lions versus the 49ers. And then you've got the Chiefs versus the, um, who is it? I don't watch football. I can Google it. Don't worry. There's yeah, there's four. Yeah, can you get that for me? Um, and so we're trying to figure out who's in it. If the 49ers are in it, that's my boyfriend's team and he's gonna want to go, which means I'll be going with him. If the Chiefs are in it, that's my team, and I'm gonna want to go, which means he's gonna have to go with me. But if neither of them are in, we're not going. So and the conference championships is Chiefs versus Ravens, Lions versus Ravens. The Ravens. Baltimore. Yes, yes, yes. So if my Chiefs get in or if his 49ers get in, we're probably going to go. I went to the Raiders game, the Raiders versus the, um, uh, what was it, Broncos recently. That was super fun. Um, uh, The new stadium out there in Vegas, it was nice to see it. 
It was really nice to see it. It was. I've heard it's a nice fucking stadium. It's a fucking gorgeous stadium, and it was a fun time. Um, and so I want to do more football games next year as well. So we're definitely hoping we do the Super Bowl. If I don't do the Super Bowl, I'll be hitting all the college games um, uh, later in the year. I'll be going to um, the Iron Bowl, of course, because I'm an Alabama girl. <laughs> I'm actually an Auburn fan, but I'm an Alabama girl. And that's I love the accents coming out. And you're talking about college ball. Yeah, I'm an Alabama girl, Auburn fan. And... <laughs> So um, that one, but I'm also hoping to maybe catch the um, Tennessee-Georgia game or the Ohio State-Michigan game. Those are all three really good rivals. So some of those. Yeah, actually, they're so thick right now. Holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit. Hey, so I've been hanging out with you all night and like on multiple other kids. certain times when it happens and I don't have any control over it. it just, like it just really came out. Like, wow. Wow. This happens. And people do that to me all the time. They'll stop me. They're like, your your accent just changed halfway through that sentence. <laughs> or they'll hear me, hear me talking and they're like, oh, you sound like a valley girl. Where are you from? And I'll say, I'm from Alabama. And they're like, oh, I hear it now. <laughs> you can't say Alabama without the accent. That's the thing. You can't. I mean, I definitely can. Because I'm a fucking Yankee. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> from chicago i can say alabama but yeah um so this that's what i've got going on is just kind of living my life i've really spent the last four or five years going through a lot um in this industry and in my personal life and building this company and trying to do everything right for it so this year i've got concerts i've got trips outside of the country instead of inside of the country where are you going canada and mexico are first and then we're hoping to go to amsterdam for expos this year well yeah you mentioned that amsterdam but like um, uh, you doing anything for fucking fun at those like out of country? Mexico's gonna be all fun. Canada's gonna be all fun. Those are not business trips. Oh, cool. Yeah, those are all fun. Kentucky Derby's all fun. Um, I'm kind of peeping out the Kentucky Derby because one year, years from now, I want to make the, this huge ghetto public statement with all my black girls there. So I'm just kind of feeling it out. Um, uh, Bonnaroo, uh, which is just like a hippie concert for me to go and have a good time and meet some other hippie normal people. And that are going to be more accepting of when I tell them, hey, I'm a porn star. They're going to be like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Let's hang out. You know what I mean? Um, so like Bonnaroo, super excited. Um, Luke Combs concert, super excited. Um, hoping to get tickets for my husband to go see Rod Wave, meet some ghetto people and, you know, um, just meet some normal, meet, make new friends this year that are outside of the industry, outside like strangers, make real new genuine friendships that who knows what they're going to do, what industry they'll come from, what background or career they have but i'll be able to learn from them and they'll be able to learn from me and we'll make new connections and that's what this year is for me because i've spent so much time underground doing everything that i need to do to build this company that now i'm really really ready to kind of like travel and live well i think it's really important to have civilian friends i really do it's very important to have civilian friends to have as friends outside of this industry in yeah, general yeah yeah as much as the internet apparently doesn't like being called civilians yeah, they hate it. They hate it. But, I mean, the military does it, too. It's Well, that, that's apparently why they claim to hate it is because we're not the military. Yeah, but you guys don't accept us as you guys either. Right. So you guys are civilians. Until you guys see us as what you guys are, as normal working Americans, you're civilians to us. Yeah. Because when we're out doing anything, it's like, oh, we have to recognize you as civilians because if you recognize what we're doing, you immediately label us as a porn star or an adult worker, and then it, there'll be this, like, veil of whatever over that, right? So, like, I don't even think it's us that are labeling them. Like, we're forced to do that because how you guys have labeled us. 100%. Yeah. That is probably <laughs> the most— that tequila making me fucking deep. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's the most concise way I've ever heard it said. Wow. I can be articulate sometimes. That's fun to learn. <laughs> I, mean, I already knew that. <laughs> Your fans don't know that because, oh, God. <clears throat> Your fans don't know that because every time I come on here, I'm so fucking drunk that I don't sound as good as I normally do. You've heard me talk. We've had, like, real conversations together. I, I'm pretty articulate usually, but when I'm here talking on the podcast, I sound like a fucking... I don't even know. I just sound like a person that's had one too many Dollaritas. <laughs> hey, that's on you. Yeah, I know. I know. As much as you're blaming me for it tonight, that's on you. I will blame you forever. And you'll thank me too, so it's fine. I will. I'll continue to twerk on you and blame you for the rest of my life. Well, 
I'm pretty sure. Are you going to come to the compound one day when I have a compound of like all black women like living in like harmony, naked on my farm? I'm going to come through sometimes, hang out with us. Yeah, sure. Play games. I'm going to have like a a basketball court. Uh, You don't want me playing basketball. I I, I, play cornhole because you're white. (laughs) Not great at that either. You can't play cornhole? Not great at that. Tennis? Definitely not. Pickleball? Nope. Come on, Matt. What do you got for me? Plenty of things. Non-sexual. What do you got for me? Who said it was sexual? <laughs> Whoa. I see where your mind is. Wow. Take your mind out of the gutter. My mind's in the gutter? Your mind is in the gutter. My mind's in the gutter. I said nothing sexual. So what, what were you thinking, Matt? Bowling? I'm not that rich. A bowling, Having my own bowling alley on the compound? That's... that's Just a one or two laner. I mean, you don't have to have like a, okay, Matt. You don't have to have a fancy pin return. You could have it so you have to manually set set them up. Okay, have hot girls set them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get win. your mind out of the gutter, Hazel. I'm just talking about like the few sports I'm okay at. I'm not even good at bowling, but I do own my own ball and shoes. Oh wow, and you're not good at bowling. I'm not. You don't have a ball, but you have shoes. Usually a ball. No, no, I have my I, I have my own ball and shoes. Oh, okay, ball and shoes. Okay. Yeah. Though the ball was not originally mine. It was someone fucking hoodlum ass early 2000s. Um, one of my coworkers got it out of someone's attic and he was going to throw it through someone's windshield. I'm like, I, I would like actually like the that. ball. Yeah. He was going to throw it through their windshield. Yeah. And I'm like, can I have that please? What did they do to him? Oh, he was just being a delinquent. They didn't do anything to him. No. He's just like, I want to go and do this. I just want to see shit break. That is insane. Delinquent ass shit. Yeah, delinquent ass shit. Where did they grow up? Where are they from? Chicago. Sounds about right. Yeah. I was, oh. like, I was like, it's either going to be Chicago, Detroit, or Philly. Yeah. Those I, are the three. Notice the three states that I said, those three cities. Those are the cities where when their football teams win or lose, they will literally destroy their, their own city. They will flip cop cars. They will demolish property. They will destroy businesses. They, like... Win or lose. Sometimes they'll do it when they win. <laughs> they'll go and destroy oh, their own city because they won. I'm old enough that I got to experience living in Chicago when the Dynasty Bulls won their first fucking championship. Oh, that was the one where they set the cars on fire? Oh, yeah. It was a crazy. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. You were there for that? Yeah. To have been alive during that. Holy shit. I mean, I was shit. a child, but it was. Holy shit. Like, I definitely remember, like, watching the news reports. You know, and, like, I remember. I remember when LeBron left Cleveland and they were burning jerseys in the street. They were people were crying. People were like weeping in the street that he was leaving. They're like, "You fucking traitor!" They're burning his jersey. <laughs> they were so upset. I lived through that one, and that one was beautiful to witness. <laughs> this, you know, this year for me is going to be more so getting into my own hobbies, and because I've. I've found balance over the past five years being in this industry, you know, running my company and running my own brand as Hazel Grace, but then also finding time for my friends and in op- new opportunities and also my family. Um, but I kind of neglected my own hobbies, which for me is mainly sports and like sports news. And I've really like lost on like a lot of sports news. Like people will say something to me about a new player and I'm like, who is that? And what are you talking about? Um, and so like, I really want to get back into it because like there's been other like new shit going on. <laughs> Like, there hasn't been anything major, to my knowledge, like, someone leaving and, like, people burning jerseys over him. Like, the newest thing right now is Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey, and, like, that's, like, all anyone can talk about, but... The NFL's all about it. It's upping the numbers. Yeah, it is. They're very excited. Very excited. Um, Which is crazy, because weren't the NFL numbers already pretty good? Oh, yeah. They weren't bad. Yeah, it's like, they weren't. Yeah, but the Swift... Like, did you need her? (laughs) There's always more money to be made in the NFL. Exactly. Exactly. Like the Swifties. And the Swifties fans, if it had not been for Swifty, that's a demographic they never would have been able to reach. Right. You know? Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Who gives a fuck who cele- which celebrities are fucking? Who really cares? And especially her, because it's like, you know she has a new boyfriend like every so often. Like, it's not going to, you know what I mean? When it comes to her, it's like, when it does last, when we see it happen, then we'll believe it. It's like, she goes from boyfriend to boyfriend. Oh, she's dating him now. That's cute and fun. But like, we're making such a big deal out of it as if they're married. 
And it's like, it's Taylor Swift, you guys. She's going to go through them all. <laughs> she's going to be writing a new song about this dude. Yeah, like she's going to, I and I predicted, I've been telling everyone, season in, she's done. If they make it to the Super Bowl, she'll write it out. If they don't make it to the Super Bowl, she's going to break up with him before the Super Bowl. If they make it to the Super Bowl, she'll write it out. And then through tr- during training season for next season, she's going to dump him. Like, she's not going to make it to next season. I I'll, I can almost guarantee you that Taylor is not going to make it to next season with Travis. Well, I don't know. And that's not me trying to be a negative person or trying to be. This is just me going off of statistics and analytics. This has been proven based upon her behavior that this is how it's going to end and how it's going to happen. Well, in all reality, none of us have a real insight on Taylor's relationships. How many of those were insecure dudes not being able to deal with a... Or narcissistic. Or both. Or both. Or both. Like The thing is about celebrities is like I never assume to believe anything. Like I don't know her. I don't know anything about her. I don't know anything about him. So I don't know. But based off of what I've seen from her relationships... It's not going to last. Well, because I, almost anyone can make a relationship last. I mean, if you really wanted to try, no one's perfect. You can make a relationship last two years. In the but, past 10 years, I don't think I've seen Taylor be in a relationship for longer than a year. Wow. I just feel called out. I haven't had a relationship last longer than six months. So, what? It's not you. It's the dating pool. It's oh, no, it's definitely me. It sucks out here. No, no. the dating pool sucks. Oh, no. It, that was back in Chicago. Like, oh, in Chicago? Yeah. Like, LA, it sucks even more. Oh, no, it's even worse. It, it's even worse in LA. Don't get me wrong. I I have spent many fucking... I'm, I'm, I think I'm better now. I think. I think. I hope. But I, I've spent many, 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 many years, I believe, technically being a fuckboy. That's what did it to you. You lost your prime years to have a good girlfriend and learn from those relationships. That's the thing. It's harder when you didn't have the practice to learn and you get older and then you don't have the knowledge that you had from those previous relationships to go off of. Well, and then add in also, I'm perfectly content being single. Yeah. Like a lot of people are. And I think that's a new wave that we are not used to in society of that single class. That's like, okay with just being single for the rest of their lives. Um, we're not used to that, but it's definitely a thing. It's It's been going on for decades now, and it's becoming more and more of a thing um, because finding a relationship is so hard. And I think that's because both parties are so, honestly, and society and, and media has pushed both parties, males and females, to be, to expect the impossible. Oh, 100%. Like- In a relationship, call, it requires a lot of compromise, and some people just don't want to fucking do that, and that's okay. Like, to do all that compromise just to have a partner, some people don't want to fucking do that. Like, yeah. Like, and some people do. I, I mean, I'm okay with making sacrifices to have my husband by my side for the rest of my life. But I also understand someone not wanting to do that because it's it's hard having to, like, compromise in ways that make yourself comfortable, but having to change that to make someone else comfortable. Hazel, I mean, you don't know, you, you know me fairly well, but you don't know me all that well. Do you really see me compromising? Do you- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I'm lucky that my husband is so okay with me being the fierce, confident, not even confident. I'm I'm more confident now, but like and ju- the ambitious person that I am, the like headstrong person that I am because like a lot of men couldn't fucking deal. I, I am a good Southern housewife. I cook, I clean, I, I obey my husband, but ultimately I have a lot of like drive in me that a lot of men couldn't deal with. And See, I, I, I wouldn't been, expect anyone to compromise with my craziness. See, like, having drive and ambition, I actually think is a sexy quality. Like, I don't want, I want a partner. I don't want someone who's like, oh. A dependent. Right. There's I don't, a partner and there's a dependent. Right. I don't want a fucking dependent. I'm both. Well. I'm both. I'm, I'm a partner and I'm a dep- I'm both. I'm thank, genuinely both. Thankfully, you're already married to someone else and I, I don't have to worry about marrying you. There's a line of guys that are waiting for him to leave me or me to leave him. There's a line. They're like, when are you getting a divorce? Can can we please marry you? And I don't, I've started to realize what it is. It's like, I really am, it's my mom. She raised, she raises Southern wives. She is very strict on how she raises her girls and her boys. And like, I have just always been taught to, if a man is kind and sweet to you and like loves you and appreciates you, you do everything you can to make that person happy well i i do appreciate that i'm not in that line hazel i i like you quite a bit but i'm not in that line i think you'll be at the top of that line 
if I though that's a lot of people waiting for me. If I come after you, Matt, if I come after you, Matt, you're not gonna say no to me. I'll put out. I'm not gonna marry you. Matt! Oh my God. I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm fucking crazy. Oh, like I'm saying. Like I'm saying. I'm crazy. I went to industry events on mushrooms. Like, eh, eh. No, but I have like my, you know, the girl problem once a month. Whatever, put a towel I think, down. I think after like six months, though, you'll get used to it, and you'll be like, "All right, bitch, you're going through it. Get the fuck away from me." Oh, I'll oh. be like, "Okay, yes, sir." I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, the actual girl problem, not like the bleeding no, problem. Like the girl, no, that problem. But well, no, no, no. Like, I'm, like hormones. And right, like, right. I mean, the blood part. You just put a towel down. I don't care. Oh yeah, no, but I'm I. I love period bitch, sex. But I become a bitch during that time period where like you gotta strap. That's the dom week. That's where like we're having like you're strapping me down for sex week. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> At the end of the day, for me, like, it, it's just, I, I have, I've historically had a lot of problems compromising. Yeah. Oh, uh, his- it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's, hard. it's, it's absolutely hard that I've had no problems being single my whole fucking life. Like my most successful relationship, that six month one wasn't even starting off as a relationship. It started off as a sex thing. And then she just started treating me so well that all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, I have feelings. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Fuck! How'd this happen? Yeah, I got I got bamboozled well, that's into why it. I have a line because I treat people so well that it, like I almost like kind of like they fall in love with me. Yeah, no, that, I don't do it on purpose. That that is how I got bamboozled. Yeah, that is how I got bamboozled. But I also have my own fucking crazy issues where it's just like everybody does. Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. And it's just one of those things where like I'm in most cases okay. With avoiding the highs to avoid the really potential lows. Yeah. Because when I do fall, I fall super hard and it's real ugly. Mm -hmm. Real ugly. Same. I can be, the thing is, like, people are always like, oh, my God, your husband is so lucky. Your husband is so lucky because they think, oh, my God, he's married to Hazel Grace. Like, he's the most lucky person alive. But it's like, I'm human. He sees the parts of me that I'm not comfortable sharing with you guys. I want you guys to love me. You guys are my fans, et cetera. But he doesn't get that. I yell at, I don't yell at you guys ever. I would never yell at my fans in a million years. I don't care how annoying you're being with me. I would never yell at you. I would not even troll back and forth with you. Like, I'm just not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to give you that energy because I'm a fucking sweetheart. I am an, a I am not. Bell, and I am not. I was taught to never show that side of myself. But with my husband, he sees every fucking side of Hazel Grace, like every fucking side of me. He has seen me be mean. He has seen me be like just rude. And he has seen me like, I don't share that with anyone else. And I, I don't want to be that way with anyone else, but I feel comfortable with him. So he has to deal with every side of me. And I feel like that's a huge compromise. You know what I mean? Like everyone's like, oh, you're so lucky you're married to Hazel Grace. He, he's not married to Hazel Grace. Like, right. He's married to the real person. Exactly. He's know? not married to the and, character. Yeah. And like he gets fun sex. He gets to fuck my porn star friends, all that fun stuff. But like, He's my partner in life, and that requires a lot. Of, we have to live together. That requires so much compromise. Right. I'm starting a business. I'm, um, I'm trying to juggle being the traditional American housewife that takes care of my husband and does everything I'm supposed to do, but also running my business because I'm so driven and ambitious. And he allows me to do both because if he was like one of those real old fashioned men, it'd be like, cut that shit the fuck out. Cut. No, you're not. I don't. Yeah. But you wouldn't have stayed in the relationship at that point. Even if you're paying for everything. Cause that like, he will pay for anything I need. I don't need to work. I don't need to do anything. I don't, I don't. And that's why I think I've been able to be in this industry for so long and not be burned out. I've never needed any of this. I could always go home and do nothing and be okay. Um, but if he had told me, this is what you have to do, would have never done it. But now that I have that option and I can like, Everything that I make is mine and I can put it into what I want, into my dreams and my goals. Like that's like a feeling that like I'm like really fucking grateful for. And it makes me kind of horny. But like I get to, he gets to fuck my friend. Like there's benefits on on both sides for us. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a two way street. Yeah. And, but we have to make sacrifices because with me starting the business and him being a Marine and him starting a whole nother business on the side of that, we're both in the middle of starting like new careers almost. Well, And, and we're always apart. In all honesty, one, if that works for you, that's amazing. Two, that might work better for some people. Because, like. Less time. Yeah, because you you don't burn out. We saw that during COVID, a lot of couples were divorcing. And him and I had the conversation of, oh, it's because they never spent, they were never forced to spend that much time together. Him and I spent a lot of time together in the beginning. We're forced to. And now we're being pulled apart. And we miss that time together, but we know that we're getting back to it. And that's what pulls us together. But for a lot of people, they got together with very few. They didn't, they weren't forced. 
They're like, our genitals fit well together. Yeah, and, and we're going to both work, and we're just like, and it wasn't their focus, and they were forced to live together in a tight space for a long period of time. And they're like, I don't like you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't like you. 100%. And like, that that's the other part that like, why a lot of my relationships or beginnings of relationships fail is like, I have a bunch of ambition. I've always had a bunch of ambition. This is like my third or fourth business. Venture, yeah. Yeah. Like I had a record label in the mid two thousands. I have started other fucking businesses. I constantly trying to do something else because I wasn't happy with my lot in life, and I understand no one was gonna fucking hand it to me, or if they were gonna hand me something, it was gonna come with so many strings that I didn't fucking want it. Like you weren't gonna want to do it. Right. Like my mother's side of the family has some money, but for me to get even a taste of it came with so many fucking strings that I want no part of it. Mm hmm. Absolutely no. And so, like, I have failed a couple times. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have to. Right. That, that's the thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with failure. The only problem is when you don't learn from it. When you don't, you know, when I, when I was running the record label, some of my artists, and this is my big beef with Chicago, were too comfortable and weren't willing to take that risk. To really fucking succeed. The number one thing that I've never been afraid to do and that I've learned over time is kind of my biggest, it's it's my biggest stressor, but it's also what's going to get me there over time. Because like I'm sitting here with you today as a no one, Matt, but like, I have plans to be. Don't, don't, don't sell you yourself. You know what I mean? Do not sell yourself so, short on that shit. You are not no one. Right. As of right now though, and in, in relation to where I want to be with my brand, it, the number one thing that I think is my strong suit and my biggest stressor is that I'm willing to take risk because you cannot get to that next level without almost risking it at all. Oh, one hundred percent. You bet, bet on the level that you're on now. You got to bet it all on the next level. You got to bet all of that on the next level. You got to bet all of that on the next level. And that's a very scary, scary move. It's oh, a scary process, but you fail sometimes and you got to keep going. You got to keep going. You got to take what you've built, what worked from what you built and keep going. 100%. And it's one of those things where is the fastest way for me to lose respect for someone is someone who's not willing to, who's completely risk averse. There was a girl I was dating, I wouldn't even say dating, involved with that was so risk adverse. Like we never actually fucked. We're like, we hung out a lot, we messed around, but she's just like afraid of everything. Yeah, afraid. She was afraid that like what was going to happen if we actually had sex. Oh, are our feelings going to change? Is the relationship going to change? Are oh, no, no, no. going to change? She definitely had feelings for me. And like. But she was worried about how the relationship would alter based on just your penis entering her. Right. I mean, my favorite was she was living in Phoenix at the time. I came down. I visited her. I stayed with her for the fucking weekend. And like, we're <laughs> such a fucked up situation. Like. She was trying to encouraged me to fuck someone else that was there. Just, I, I don't know if it was like a weird girl test or like, what sounds like a weird girl test. Yeah. Cause if she's at that point already interested in you and you know it, and now she's trying to get you to fuck someone else, it's definitely a girl test. Yeah. I'm like, no, I, I'm here to see you. Like, and that wasn't like me. You keep it in your pants. Oh yeah. 100%. Like, Can I go pee? we will pause for a moment from my, my dick experience. His is back. <laughs> Another couple friend of mine, of mine, her and a friend of hers, we all end up naked in a hot tub. Okay. And her friend is like about it. Like she is trying to like get some mad inside her. And I'm just like, first and foremost, I'm just like, this is not, I'm, I'm here visiting this girl and this is not where I wanted to be, even if I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But you're, the girl that you were seeing saw an opportunity. She's like, he's here, plus my friend is being a, a slut. So I'm going to see if he's good down for somebody that's this easy. Right. And, like, I'm notoriously easy. She's like, okay, but she's, she's easy. Let's see. He came here for me, and this girl's DTF for anybody. Is he going to stay here for me, or is he going to fuck her just because she's down to fuck it? I'm telling you what she was thinking. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I, I completely pass. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm here to see you. Like, yeah. I... I'm Our hurting. move. It wasn't even a move. It was just my legitimate thought. Like, because at the end of the day, if we're not in an actual thing, like there is no relationship here. There's no established rules. If it had been someone who I wanted to fuck, 
it may have been a different story. Like, I'm just being authentic here. Mm-hmm. Like, and I take people at face value. If you're going to say, you should go fuck her, and it's someone I wanted to fuck, I probably would have gone fucked her. Yeah. I don't, I'm not here to play games. That's the thing. See, I'm always being authentic. And I'm also just a weirdo. So in general, if I'm out with somebody that I like in general, even if I haven't fucked you, that's going to turn me on even more as a cuck. Like, oh, you're making me fucking wait for it. You're going to fuck her first. Oh, that's kind of hot. Like, so for me, I'm all automatically different. But also, I don't play games. If right. I'm going to tell you to go and fuck her, I want you to go and fuck her. Right. If I want you to fuck me. I'm not going to let you go and fuck her. And I think that girls like to play those games, but I, I'm so direct. I'm just like, no, if I want something, I'm going to tell you that I want it. And it's going to be up to you if you want to do that or not. You know what I mean? And that's how it should be. Yeah, but like also being a Southern woman, you're not taught to be that way, to be that direct. You know, that's just a part of me and who I am as a human being. Well, good on you. Against of how I was raised. It's like, if I want something, I'm going to tell you I want it. And usually guys like that. Oh, I do. 10 out of 10, guys are going to be like, oh, cool. Actually, nine, because I've had a few guys that have been like, oh, but like, usually they're like, that is perfectly fucking fine. Let's do it. Like, As a dude, I'm 100% like, because especially in modern society, there is still some navigating. You got to read the room. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, if I like asking for consent is important. Like consent is fucking. Sexy. Consent is sexy. Right. But I know women who have said to my face, like, oh, it kind of turns me off when he asks me if he can kiss me. I've had women say that to me. Would you rather any guy just go in and kiss you, though? Because I feel like you have to think about it not from the guys that you want to kiss you. Don't you want anyone to ask you? Because you don't want anyone to assume that they can. You want the hot guys to assume that they can, but by definition, you're then saying you want anyone to assume that they can. Uh, I agree with you. But as a dude, it when you're like, Pull your dick out. Kiss me. Do whatever. It eliminates all, all that ambiguity. I alleviate, I alleviate you even having to ask with that sexy line of like, yeah. kiss me. Or, or like me just doing it. Or just me pull your dick out. Or like, you can alleviate that and still be sexy. Right. Like, I messed around with someone a couple nights ago. And like, it was fully consensual. And it was a good time. And the next day, it's just like, I didn't hear from her right away. I'm like, did, in the back of my head, I'm like, did something go wrong there? No, sometimes we just get laid and we're good. Me being <laughs> married and like, I fuck guys all the time just because I'm bored. <laughs> and I want to, you know, and I know that you're tested and you're in, this, in the industry and I can trust you. And I'll just fucking, you know, like, I just need some dick right now. And then, like, I have no need to text you the next day. Why, oh, no. Why would I bother you? You know what I mean? Like, we did our thing. I'll hit you up at, a, like, holidays, et cetera. I don't know. Did I text you over Christmas? And you everything? did. I, I, on Thanksgiving and Christmas, those are my two holidays. I sit there on Thanksgiving and Christmas every holiday, and I text almost everybody in my contact contact list, specifically anyone I've had sex with throughout the year, et cetera. No, anyone, she has not had sex with anyone me. I, anyone I've worked with or had sex with or been, you know, like, in the— in general, I think it's good for business. I think it's good for, and, and like, just to keep relationships up. One, for me, I don't text throughout the year. If we're not working together, I'll have sex with you and then not talk to you again until Thanksgiving when well, I send the happy Thanksgiving text. Well, and that's Because, a, like, there's no need for us to stay. You're going to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. You're going to comment. You're going to like. I'm going to comment. I'm going to like. We're in touch with each other. We know what's going on in each other's lives. There's no need for me to be bothering you and calling you and how are you and what. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, in this specific situation, we didn't fuck. We just messed around a little bit. Uh huh. And we, like, we had plans to fuck the next day. Oh, and then she just didn't contact yeah. you. She, yeah. Because you're smart to not contact her though. To wait. Yeah. To wait. Oh no, I just got a text from her like while you were in the bathroom. So, like, everything's good. Mm -hmm. She she told me like I talked to her earlier. It was chill for you to wait though. Yeah. Well, and like, I found out you know she had some other drama going on. That's why the hookup didn't happen. But initially in my mind, I'm like, did something go fucking wrong here? Yeah. Like, I know this is perfectly consensual. I know she was, like, it wasn't just me going in for the kiss. Like, she was definitely, like, initiating kisses. So were you worried because there wasn't the explicit consent? Yeah, because, like. Oh, okay. Yeah. So explicit, that's, again, that's why explicit consent is so important. It takes away that doubt from anyone's mind the next day. You know what I mean? Where it's like someone, you wanted this. I'm also a crazy person. Like, I've gotten a complicity consent because it can be removed after the fact. Yeah. 
And it's just like consent can be revoked at any time. Right. And I fully acknowledge that. And like, there's been public service announcement. Consent can be revoked at any time. There's definitely times where it's like consent was explicit. It was hot. And it was just like, after the fact, like I'm just completely getting in my own head. Like this is my during you were no, no, not during. Oh, I was like, what? No, 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 the next day. But it's like, something go fucking wrong there. Like it, it, that's my issue. That is completely my issue. Like, if you're an outside, if like there was a play by play commentator, I went down, went down like, no, Matt's in the end zone and like, yo, know, it's fine. <laughs> but as a player on the field, I can't see the fucking whole fucking. You fuck- cannot. You cannot. You can't even hear the commentators. <laughs> right, exactly. So like when a woman tells me like, no, fucking run it in me. Like put it in me now. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh shit. Okay. Fuck yes. Yes. And she 100%. Could fucking res- pull the uh, hell. I, I've talked about this on air. I hooked up with a performer. I mean, this is years ago at this point. Like, it was a, a like put it in me now, and I got maybe like ten pumps in. And she's like, "Oh, we should stop." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." So she wanted it in that moment, and then you started having sex. And she's like, "I should not be doing." I get that. You remember? I mentioned I don't have any self control. When I was fucking the guy, the French guy, I was like, "I'm not supposed to be doing this." You know what I mean? Like, we had an agreement, right? Right. And. Um, my friend Lacey has a saying, the way something starts is how it ends. If you start a relationship a certain way, it ends that way. He was a boyfriend. He was um, supporting me, and we had, like, an agreement. But then I slipped up, and I was horny. And so, like, I fuck him. And ultimately, it was just a – I could have at any point, And I was thinking about it in my head. I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing this. But I wanted to do it, and so I did it. And, like, ultimately, like, I wasn't going to make that, like, his problem. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, fuck it. You know, like, 10 pumps in. You're already 10 pumps in. Why stop now? Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, for I, me. I, for me. That's how no, I, I personally. I, le- I left an important part out. I, I did. She pulled the condom off me, and then we went back to it. And then that's when. She's like, all right, let me. See. She got. I, my point is, just like me. She got carried away, just like any woman. Yeah. We get horny and we get carried away. You get horny, you get carried away. And that's how some of the most responsible people have ended up with STDs that last a lifetime. Right. You know, because you get in that moment and you get so carried away. And then you are like 10 pumps in and you're like, wait a minute, use your fucking brain for a second. You know, 100%. And like, it was such a weird situation because like I left because I didn't, I didn't think that hookup was going to happen. And like, I left happy to have been in the game. Mm-hmm. she like was mortified that like she had disappointed herself right that she, she got slipped up. she th- slipped up i mean we ended up hooking up again years later but like for me the beauty of this industry is that you tested and everybody is usually like yeah. here's my test and then i don't have to worry with you um and i can slip away and i can have those moments of weakness while also feeling completely secure in my decision like sure. I'm safe in this decision, even though I'm slipping up and I'm being a little, a little careless, I'm being a little whorish, yeah, I'm being a little slut. Um, and I'm married to such my best fucking friend, and he texted me. I got here. I was here for a, a couple of days in LA. I was with him for a long time in Texas, and I came here. I was here for a couple of days. He's like, I just had this bitch come over and suck my dick, and she was in and out of our house in like an hour. Like, made him come and left immediately. And I'm the same way. We're like, I'll slip up and I'm able to call him like, babe, I was a fucking whore. I don't know. I don't know. I either it was the alcohol or him, but it got me going. I was loose and it happened. And like, he is always there to ask me the same questions. Did you see his test? Do you know him? Right? Usually that's first. Do you know who it is? Like, do I know who it is? You remember his face. Right? Do, do I know who it is? Do you know who it is? Yes. Right? Did you see his test? Yes. Did you have fun? Is always his third question. Right. Well, and I'm just like, yes. <laughs> and then he was like, it's worth it. Like, and that's what I, I, I espouse to everyone is like, cheating only hurts for the betrayal. Yes. At the end of the day, everyone you've been involved with has fucked someone else and they're probably going to fuck someone else after you. Most definitely. Are you going to be upset if your partner goes and gets a fucking massage? Like that's a a happy ending massage too recently. Yeah. But even without the happy ending, that is a stranger causing you physical pleasure with their hands all over you. If you're not bothered by that, why the fuck would you be bothered by someone having consensual intercourse? Society teaches a lot of women, especially in the South and the Bible belt, you know, that once a man's penis enters a woman, 
love. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, it's just like this. They're, and, and, and sometimes it's just like they want their person. I've got friends from back home. Like, they want their person. That's their person. They don't want anyone else touching their person. I just think that's a very old and outdated way of thinking because of how society has moved along. And there's so many humans and there's so many, so much temptation. Like, why not? There's so many fun? options. Yeah, why not have fun, et cetera. Even, did you see that Pope Francis recently came out and said that God gave us sexual pleasure outside of reproduction? For a reason. Like, he literally said, sex can be for just pleasure. It's not just for reproduction, which is what the Catholic Church has thought for centuries now, that sex is for reproduction only. He just Unless it's with, uh, never mind. <laughs> he just recently came out and said that that is not why. Well, yeah, because. the only reason God gave they, they still need new Catholics. Also for sexual pleasure, it, right? <laughs> um, and so, like, it's just a matter of of being comfortable with your partner. Like, my friends are not open to monogamy or polygamy. They're only open to monogamy and they want their partner to just themselves. But to me, I don't see relationships like that as long lasting. It's not able to last a lifetime like they used to be able to. Um, and as well as I feel that mine and my husband's or any polygamous relationship is stronger than any any monogamous relationship because in a lot of monogamous relationships, what you'll have is the fear of sharing. They don't even want to tell you when they're attracted to another person. Yeah, because they're they're afraid of losing what's quote theirs. People aren't property. Even if we are together, you're my partner. You're not my property. Mm -hmm. I want my husband to have his fun, and I want me to have my fun. Right, and as I said earlier. The betrayal is what would hurt. Yes. And we don't lie to each other. Again, same three questions. Did you know who it was? Do I know who it was? Were they tested? Did you see their test? Did you have fun? That's all he's worried about. You know what I mean? Like, if I was safe and if I had fun and that's it. And it's also, like, him and I had a conversation when we were getting married. We got married really young. We were both 20. And we were like... At least till we're 30, we're going to want to have some fun, right? <laughs> like, right? We were both like, right, 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 right. And we both kind of agreed that, like, at the very least, we should do this until we're 30. I think we're still going to continue to do it. But at the very least, we made the agreement until we're 30. When we're 30, we'll sit down. I mean, obviously, we both have the right at any point to sit down with each other and have the conversation. But when we're 30, we're going to sit down and have the conversation. Do we want to continue to be open or do we want to kind of settle down? Or, like, what's our move, et cetera? But if that conversation happened now, like— for whatever reason, he gets a massive head wound or something, and it changes. Because I feel like that's right. the only way that would do it. Right? Like some massive brain trauma is the only reason he's going to change his exactly. mind. Exactly. Like, like, why would you change your mind? You have a, a wife that loves you, like, is dedicated to you, but also you can do whatever you want when it comes to all the women in your life. Like, But hypothetically, he said, he's like, tomorrow, he's just like, you know what? I just want it to be us. What? Like, how do you respond to that? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I got. If I'm being 100 percent honest, wouldn't be easy for me. But he's my husband, and I think we'd have to make we'd make it work. We'd make it work. What? I think he is my partner in life. I am the most lucky person on this planet because I found my partner in life. We've had anyone that tells you they're in a perfect marriage is lying to you. So I'm in a very happy and fulfilled marriage, but it's not perfect. Nothing's we've perfect. We've had conversations where it's like, should we, are we going to be together forever or what's going to be? And no matter what happens, no matter what we end on, no matter what, like if it's going to be this, this, or this, or that, it always ends with us being supportive of each other, helping each other, and still being in each other's lives. And that's how I know that I'm one of the most lucky people on this planet. Because a lot of marriages, you don't get every option. Every You got five options out. All five are not going to be good. All five of my of oh. my options don't end with us hating each other. All five may be bad. Right? In a lot of situations. And I'm in a situation where no matter what happens with us, he's going to be supportive of my career. He's going to be supportive of me. He's going to make sure that I'm okay. He's going to make sure that I'm good and I'm, you know, secure and I am stable. And so if he were to say to me tomorrow, I want to cut it loose, we might have to have a conversation because I'm still in my hoe phase. But I think that we'd be good. And that, you know, we'd figure something out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I keep telling him he needs a girlfriend. If anybody wants to date my husband, please. He needs like a like a full-term girlfriend. <laughs> he's got like a bunch of little hoes, but he needs like a full-term girlfriend. And I think he's he's open to trans. 
So I've never had sex with a trans. I want to have sex with a trans woman. Pre-op or post-op? Either. Personally, I am just not attracted to penises. It took me a long time um, to be into trans performers. I think my husband was into them before me. Um, and I kept getting offered shoots with them. And I was like, I don't know. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to give you a good scene. Um, I had my first ever trans scene. <laughs> I'm so lucky. With Emma Rose. Nice. I mean, go, I wait, have, way to go top tier on your first could, one. Yeah, I'm like, if I could have any dick and tits, it would be that dick and tits. Oh, my God. She is such, I mean, her beauty aside, her energy. She's such a beautiful fucking person. Like, oh, my God, she's such a good time. And slutty, like, okay, so I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know what I'm worried, what I was worried about because it's just like, I don't know what I was scared of. She was so fun and horny and slutty and, like, just all the things, like, like, we're in the middle of the scene. Like, she's not, like, a boring, like, performer that's just sitting there. She's making, like, she's turning us on. She's, like, being slutty and being nasty. And I love a talent that, like, we can have that, like, um, you know, banter between each it's other. chemistry. Yeah. Of, like, this isn't just work. Bitch, I'm about to fuck you. Like, I'm about to fuck you. Like, oh, I loved her energy. Oh, God, I love her energy. And now I'm just excited to work with as many trans performers as I can. Because, again, my husband was already kind of, he'd been watching the scenes. And had never seen me work with any. And he was pushing me. He's like, you should definitely do that. And I did. And I, I was just like, what the fuck was I afraid of? Like, this was so great. Like, Well, I understand. Like, there's the fear that it might hurt your brand if you give a bad performance. Like, I, I understand, like, the hesitation. Like, I understand that it's not coming from a place of transphobia or any shit like that. No, it was not coming. And it wasn't coming from a place of transphobia. For me, it was coming from a place of anything that I had done on camera. At that point, I'd already done off camera. And I'd not had an off camera trans experience. And so I didn't feel comfortable doing it on camera because I'd never done it off camera. It was never from a place. I'm pansexual. Right, right. No, as I said, yeah, it's definitely pansexual. not coming. So it was just a place of like, I'm about to do this on camera and I've never done it in real life. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm going to make her feel weird. If I'm going to be weird, it was just going to be weird, you know? Because <laughs> like, I don't Well, know hopefully it's, it's going to be a little weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it was, it was uh, that scene is nominated for an AVN. <laughs> like, that my very first trans scene ever was nominated for an AVN. Like, like it could not have worked out better. <laughs> for me, like, I'm not trying to be transphobic. Like, <sighs> just the idea of, like, another dick being in the situation just doesn't appeal to me. Just doesn't. Like, I definitely feel that, like trans people have the right to exist. They're fucking valid human beings, like, 100%. Like, every, They're or, beautiful women. Or, and, and Oh, no, in a, in a lot of cases... Because of science, they are better looking than that, you know, you know, people born as women. Mm -hmm. it, but it, <sighs> Emma looks 10 times better than me. She looks like a fucking Barbie doll. I hate her. I hate <laughs> you. I fucking hate you. <laughs> but I, I just can't get past the Though, I, I, I don't know. I'm like, part of me is like, but post op with the science pussy. I, I've actually never seen one of those. On one hand, it's just like, but I should fuck this pussy for science. This is the best pussy that science could make. But on the other hand, it's not self-lubricating. And No, it is. No, no, the science pussies are definitely not self-lubricating. Isn't it, though? No. Because they come. They come, but they, they, they don't self-lubricate. Oh. And on top of it, like, there's a lot of times just how trans women's voices sound to me is not attractive to me. Like, once again... Y'all are very valid people. You are very sexy people. It's just not something I'm attracted to. Mm -hmm. Like, and that that's the thing that most people need to fucking figure out is like. Preference does not mean um, discrimination. Exactly. Exactly. It's like. I have that issue with melanin a lot. People, you know, struggle with how I choose to brand in melanin because um, we focus on women of color and not men of color. And so they expect when a lot of people are like, oh, we thought this was going to be black on black and all black on black. And for me, when I started in Melanin, the logo tells you my focus was women. Uh, my focus was women of color and giving women of color an incentive to remain in this industry for longer and longer periods of time so that we can have more Jada Fires and more Anna Foxes and more Jenna Foxes and et cetera, and more people with elongated careers in this industry and to give them an incentive to do that. And so that requires 
white, Mexican, black, and I don't care what the penis looks like. For me, it was the female talent, and I had I've had complaints. Even we haven't even launched yet, and I've had complaints um, about the fact that it's not all black on black, and it's just like for me personally, I don't prefer that. I love to have sex with black men. But when I'm watching a porno, I prefer to see a white man with a black woman. And that's just what I like. But that doesn't make me racist. That doesn't make me, you know, any, that's just, that's my preference. My preference doesn't mean, and you know what it is? I think the important thing for people to note, right? Here's another one of my little articulate moments is that it's not about any of that because ultimately you're talking about porn. You're talking about something that makes someone their jig their dick jump or their pussy tingle. Right. You're not talking about something that encourages them to vote or something that encourages them to act a certain way or something that encourages them, right? So we're not talking about something that actually matters. This is what makes my dick jump ultimately. I mean, so my, I, I, I have to, I have to stop you there for one sec. My, one sec. My dick jumping is very important. It is. <laughs> but, but what makes my dick jump is simply a preference, not a discrimination. Correct. Because it's not my life choices. It's what, I, this just get me off. And I think people are taking it too deep to like, oh, if that's what gets you off, then you're racist. Or if that's what gets you off, then you're this. And if that's what gets you off, then you're that. And it's like, well, no, this is simply what makes my dick jump. And at the end of the day, you, me, none of us have control over that. Right. And it's like, okay, there are definitely black women I'm attracted to. There are black women I'm not attracted to. Like, it's a preference. It, and it's, it's based on an individual. It's not like, oh, you know. I'm not mad at the fact that 50% of men are not going to support in melanin. 50% of men in the United States of America are not simply not going to accept or join in melanin.com. I know that. I'm okay with that. I accept that. I did not start in melanin for you. I started in Melanin. You didn't start it for me? What the fuck, Hazel? What? I like black women. I, I started it for wait, wait, men. Wait a minute. What makes you I think I like black women? other 50% of men that don't have the exposure that those other 50% have. Those other 50% have hundreds of thousands, not thousands, but they got hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, almost a thousand white women that they can watch from the past 10 years. When it comes to black women, that number is maybe 200 for the past 10 years. And so for me... I just want to give that other 50% of men the same ex like exposure, the same product that everyone else gets. Because like you're not going to be for me, but there are men that are out there for these women, and I want them to know that there's someone out there providing the content that they want. You know what I mean? Whether it be a black girl being fucked by a white guy, whether it be a black girl being fucked by a Mexican guy, whether it be a black girl. I know that you want to see this. I know that me growing up watching porn – I, it was hard for me to find what I wanted to see. If I'm typing in black girl with braces doing this, it's going to be harder for me to find it if I typed in girl doing this with braces. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. You know, and so like for me, it's just like fixing that, what's the word? That 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 hole. Right, you're and filling a hole. Filling that hole, right? For oh, Hazel that. Grace wants holes filled. Yeah. That's all I want is holds filled <laughs> with hot women and content. And like, yeah, I want another fucking Jade of Fire for a melanin. And I want another fucking Missy Stone and another fucking Anna Fox. You know what I mean? Like, I can't wait. I love that you were like, you like black girls though. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you like black girls. I mean, I do, but does. I, my, my former roommate who was a comedian was like, did a whole bit about me. Like I would watch it and he's like, my roommate fucks more black girls than I do, and he's black. <laughs> he said that from the stage. He said that from the fucking stage. I mean, I, I also had a black girl as a date to that show. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad for her. Oh, my God. Did she know the joke was about you? Oh, no. He's like, <laughs> he, no, 100% she had to. He's like, oh, shit, my roommate's in the audience. Oh, no, some of this is about him. And he's just. Oh, my God. And he's just like, yeah, my roommate fucks more black girls than I do. And like, I haven't been with a black girl in years. Another reason I started this company is I love to watch my white friends fuck black girls. It's kind of hot. I mean, I like to watch black guys fuck them too. Like Alex Jones has done a, Alex Jones has done a few scenes for Melanin before he got signed with Brazzers, which I'm lucky to have had him before he got his. I knew the moment I met him, he was going to be a big star. I knew. I'm like, they don't know you yet. But when they see you, Alex, they're going to fucking love you. You're an amazing performer, an amazing actor. You're professional. You're fun. You're fucking horny. Love it. They're going to love you. Not even a year later, he's signed by Brazzers. Fuck yeah. But I had the pleasure of having him on set for a melanin a couple of times, and I got to watch him fuck some of my girls. But I got to be honest, my favorite 
I love to watch Johnny fuck my black girls. I love to watch um who else has fucked Michael Vegas fuck my black girls and my my Asian girls. And I just love I like I'm such a cuck that like I this company is more so of an extension of my sexual life than anything. I get to orchestrate. I want to see you fuck them and you fuck them. And like, it's almost like my fans kind of want to see the same thing. Like I was Googling the porn they wanted to see and that they didn't have access to. And now I have the opportunity to make that content for them. I'm qu- I'm curious. What do you feel about the possible just like fetishization of black women by white men? So that goes back to our conversation of just because it's a preference does not mean it's a discrimination. I think that that also applies to fetishizations. It's a preference. If it's what they like, it's what they like. Why do we have to make it? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. When it becomes, okay, I want to see black women doing derogatory things. Well, yeah. That's a different conversation. Race plays ugly. Right? But, like, let's be honest. There are white women out here doing some pretty degrading things as well. Oh, 100%. I don't necessarily think it's about race for a lot of things. Because in that that group of five white men that want to see this thing that might be seen as derogatory, there's also three or four black men that want to see the black girl doing the same thing. For sure. For sure. I I think... The correct me if I'm wrong. The biggest difference between fetishization and preference is if I'm just like, oh, I want to watch all black girls get fucked versus like, oh, I think these black performers are fucking attractive. I don't think that's a problem at all because there's a lot of men out there that I only want to watch white women get fucked. That is the thing. There's a lot of men out there that will not watch black porn. Yeah, but that's the thing because that's what they like. So why is it different for white men that only want to watch black women? But, I don't understand why there's this like confusion for people where it's like, oh, when it's black women, it's a fetish. But if they only want to watch white women, it, like it's normal. You know what I mean? Like I don't understand that. Well, me personally, I don't want to watch every white woman get fucked. Not every one of them, but that's the thing. You're one of those guys in the middle. <laughs> but there are men, right, on both sides of the aisle. For sure. That only want to see white women get fucked and only want to see black women get fucked. In those courts... There are black men and white men that only want to see white women get fucked. And there are black men and white women that only want to see black women get fucked. I think that it's wrong for us to try to separate them and try to say that they're either fetishizing or discriminizing or et cetera on either side. You just like what you like. These guys are not discriminating against black. Good catch. Almost. No, no, it did not touch your thing. That's what I was worried about. Um, these guys do not want to see (laughs) um, black women be fucked. And that is completely okay. And on the other side, you've got these guys who do not want to see uh, white women be fucked. And that is completely okay because they both have their preferences. And that is what it is. And I think it's wrong to assume that everyone on this side is white or everyone on this side is white or black. Right? You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I I didn't think it was an assumption. No, no, no. I know. And I know the question you're asking. But, like, my answer is that I think that it's wrong for anyone to try to assume or to assume at all that any group is only full with one type of person. You know what I mean? Because while you're worried that... Oh, and any company is going to fetishize black women for white men. There are white black men in that group as well. They're not just fetishizing them for white men. I mean, yeah. They're showing them to black men that want to see them as well. Um, and I do worry about that within Melanin because I have already had the comments about stuff like that. And my answer is always like, you worry about what gets you off in the bedroom. Don't worry about what, what's getting everyone else off in the bedroom. It's not it's, your concern what everyone else is watching or, as long why, as or why they're watching it. All, as long as it's between consenting adults. Yes. Yeah. The, the minute it doesn't involve consenting adults, we care. That's when we have a problem. That's when we have or a fucking problem. Or children or anything like well, that. That's uh, when we have that, a problem. That falls into not consenting that adults. Or animals, right? Yeah. That that all falls into not consenting adults. Please don't get me banned from YouTube. Yeah. Consenting <laughs> but, adults. Yeah, consenting adults does cover it all. But yeah, it's... Um, I've had those things. And like for me, I'm sorry to say it, Matt, uh, Matt but like my goal is to fetishize black women. All right. It is. It is. It is to give us the exposure and the spotlight and the shine that we deserve because we're worth fetishizing. We're fucking beautiful. (laughs) We're chocolate, beautiful fucking beings. And that is something to be obsessed with. I have never had a bad time in bed with a black woman. Just don't put that out there. Never had a bad time. And a lot of women are going to have a problem with that too. But you know what? Sorry, you're beautiful. I love you. Yeah, I, I, I have a question for you on that. <laughs> do you judge potential partners on other people they've slept with? No. What do you think about people that do do that, though? I think it's weird. I agree. Um, I think everyone evolves. 
back to that, you know? And, like, ultimately, it doesn't matter if they had sex with them two years ago or two weeks from now. Like, they're moved on to you, and that obviously means there's some sort of progression. Well, if you think anything of yourself, that means there's some sort of progression. I had a female friend of mine be like, I was into this dude until he hooked up with X, this person. And then, uh, and these are all performers. So mm -hmm. it's like, he was doing it for Maybe work. Maybe he liked something about. Oh, he was doing it for work. work. And she was like, I'm, I'm now turned off. I'm not into him anymore. I'm Jesus like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, what the fuck? I think that's kind of foolish, honestly. I, I agree. Because you could for a moment say, I'm into him etc. Or I'm not into him because if he saw anything in her that he liked in her, that's wrong. Now nah, I don't want to work with him. But when you bring work into it, it's like he probably saw nothing other than a willing participant. Yeah, he's like, I got, <laughs> I would like my paycheck, please. He saw a willing participant and he did what he had to do to get his work done. Right. Because in this industry, it's all about collabs and making connections and making those, oh, you know, networks. exactly. And so, but yeah, even though, even if it wasn't a work thing, though, like. People have redeeming qualities. Even for you to say, for me, right now, I can say there's only one woman in this industry that I don't like. And I'm not going to name names because I'm not a Please don't. person. Of course not. I would never. But I can still sit here and say that she has redeeming qualities that I like about her. And I think anyone, if they're being honest with themselves, could say that no matter who I don't like, they have redeeming qualities about themselves. So if I don't like that girl, but this guy chose to go and shoot with her, he saw those redeeming qualities. Well, and in this particular situation, it was purely a physical thing. Like it was work, but I'm but, saying. But no, 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 no. I'm saying like she was upset, like that she was a BBW. Like, like how she was turned off because yeah, it was like wild to me, wild. Because he did. She's turned off because he didn't discriminate. That's what it is. Yeah. He she expected him to say, "Oh, she's a BBW. I'm not into that." Right. She's a woman, and probably a beautiful woman. If he still decided to stick his dick inside of her. Or you wanted the paycheck. Who knows? Who cares? It's work. She had to be cute, though. Let's be honest. You can't just shove your dick inside of anything. It doesn't work that way. It, it has in the past. I guess, like, pills will do that. Oh, no, no, no. I've just been drunk and horny at times. And I've... I, I, then she was pretty. I mean, I'm not talking about... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking personally. I'm, I'm talking about other people. Personally, I've definitely fucked some people that, like, I've been drunk and just... I, I've described as masturbating inside them. I need pineapple juice on that note. Okay. Do you have pineapple juice? <laughs> it's in the fridge. It's it. You want me to get it? Uh, we can pause for a moment because I do need a pee. But like, you need a pee? before we do that, it's like, yeah, 100%. Like, I've hooked up with some people while I was drunk that it was just like, oh, you're presenting. You're enthusiastically wanting me to fuck you. Yeah. And, and you're just not there. And I'm just like, I'm drunk. Getting off sounds fun. Oh, wow. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. Okay, I've been there too. Yeah. yeah I think we've all been there. But the, I don't feel like I was a piece of shit in this situation because, okay, I let me re rephrase that. I was partially a piece of shit. I don't think I was emotionally a piece of shit because there was no expectation of anything there. Physically, I probably- two of you. Right. Physically, I probably could have been better about like trying to get their needs met. On that note, we're going to pause while I pee in. Hazel gets some pineapple juice. <laughs> Matt, are you having fun? I'm having so much fun. Always. I always have fun with you. I swear. I love you. Aw. I do. I like you too. <sighs> now, 100%, like, back to the earlier topic. I love you, Hazel. I love you. There have been some partners in my life where it was consented, con enthusiastically thrown at me, and I had never considered it beforehand, but I was horny, drunk. If you've been with that person and never even considered it, that's how you know, like, you don't want to fuck them. You've never oh. even considered it. Oh, no. One now of them. Now they're throwing it at you. One of them threw it at me before and I wasn't drunk enough. And I was like, no, I'm cool. That's got to hurt. And then I got very drunk at a different point. It was like, so did you still want to do that? And she still wanted to. Oh, yeah. As I've ever referred to it multiple times, I have made some poor dick choices. I'm looking to make some fun ones this year. Some fun dick tours. Some like one night stands, never see him again. Like, cause I told you I'm traveling this year. I'm trying to like meet someone in Canada, fuck them one good time and like never talk to him again. Get on it. Same for Mexico. Like I, and I wanted to be a nobody, like just like, like a, like a hot employee working a menial job. Well, you know, uh, when you were talking about your checklist earlier, I'm like, 
There's been a lot of times where it was just number three that got checked. One hundred percent. Like, did you have fun? That's all I Right. Like there was definitely. There are multiple partners in my. <laughs> there are multiple people that I've had sex with in my life where I do not know their names. Like I never knew their name. I could think of two where I don't know their names. I think everyone else I know their names. I've had a lot of one night stands. I know I had a one night stand in San Diego four years ago. I still remember that kid's name, Adam. I still remember because I saved it in my phone. I still remember his name. Like when I never saw him again, never talked to him again. None of that, but I remember his name because I. <laughs> This week was my 10-year anniversary of almost getting married at AVN 14. Wait, what? My audience has definitely heard this. This was your, this is your what? My 10-year anniversary of almost getting married at AVN 14. Okay. But part of that story is I hooked up with some fucking swinger before I hooked up with the person I almost married. It's a good day. Yeah. It's a good day. Like, what? You hooked up with a swinger, and then you hooked up with her, and then you guys almost got married? Yeah. Holy shit. It was a good day. It was yeah. a good fucking like married in Vegas that weekend. Oh yeah, we got a certificate like, and everything. I'll show. I will show you the picture of the certificate after we get off air. That's crazy. Yeah, like literally, if the Kiss Chapel was available, we would have gotten married. Thank God it wasn't, huh? Right, and then her and I are still friends, and like it's easy to get married in Vegas. It's not so easy to get divorced after. I mean, what's super fucked up is I, I like her and I were never involved. Like we hung out twice, banged once, and almost got married. Talk about a whirlwind romance. Well, like the audience, maybe I haven't told the story in a while, but like basically what happened was we ditched the award show. And during the award show, she went, this is my first trip to Vegas. I should have a quickie wedding. I had. She said that she should have a quickie wedding. Yeah. She wanted to get married in yeah. Vegas to anyone. Yeah. I had already hooked up with a swinger, been drinking all day. And I went. So you were down for anything. Fuck it. I mean, and we proceeded to lose all our friends with all the PDA all over the casino once I said yes. Like, we were just going at it, like, at, on slot machines. It's like, it was sloppy. It was fucking sloppy. Making out. Making out, just going at And your friends left. Yeah, everyone's just like, this is... This, too much. Yeah, this is too fucking much. Yeah, we end up hooking up, like, very drunk. I woke up to her wearing a crotchless Pokemon onesie. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was... It was a whole to-do. Oh, my God. It was a whole fucking to-do. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. A lot of fucking fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, I, did you get married? No, no. We, okay. As I said. Pass out. Well, we passed out. We went to the Burning Angel brunch the next morning. Mm-hmm. Kept drinking those bottomless bloodies. And Burning we, Angel, Joanna? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's my old school in to the industry. That was your in? Yeah. That's cute. I... Some, you know, and I've been having this conversation with my BBC that I was telling you about earlier. I'm his in. He is so talented. And I know that even without me, he would have found his way into this industry. But I'm his in. And now he's, yeah. I love that for you because Joanna and, and, um, uh, and Small Hands. Small Hands, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I was working at Xmart, like before I joined the industry, I was selling their DVDs and I was looking at their come up story. Oh, no. That kind of motivated me. Not to claim my old schoolness. I was in charge of babysitting small hands when he was still a civilian. Joanna was like, watch my boyfriend. Oh, because she was performing and he wasn't yet. He was just a bartender from San Diego. Yeah. But she was still performing. Oh, no, no, no. she had been well stuff. She owned Burning Angel. like. But they started the company together? No, no, no not at all. No, she turned him out. Oh. Yeah. No, no. Small hands is a the much. The story from back in the day that we heard at the store was that they met in college. Oh, no. So her actual business partner, Mitch Fontaine, and. Joanna met in college. They were never romantically involved. And then Small Hands came in. Years later. I did not know that. That's interesting because back at the store, to this day, probably they're telling the story that they met in college, started Burning Angel together, and now they are the success story that they are. That's not at all. Not at all. Interesting because I, that's very interesting. Not at all. Small Hands was a bartender in San Diego who she got introduced, introduced to by Brian Street Team, who's another old school Burning Angel performer. BA was a thing for- She started Burning Angel? She did, yes. By herself? With Mitch Fontaine, her college friend. So you think I can do this then? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you, think, you think I'd be here promoting you if I didn't believe in you? <laughs> Thank you. You know, I have a lot of people that believe in me, and it keeps me going, man. It really does. Um, I mean, I believe in the dream, but to have other people believe in it- You think I would have you on like 
twice in a year, if three times in a year, technically, <laughs> if I didn't believe in your bullshit. I'm, I'm not calling it your bullshit, but it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's porn. I am not Neil deGrasse Tyson. I produce, create, direct porn. <laughs> but yes, we we back to the original story. We went to the Burning Angel brunch. We drank bottomless bloodies. A friend of ours drove us to the courthouse. We got the certificate. The kiss so the next morning, you guys were still dedicated to this. I mean, we were second guessing it, and then we got drunk again. Oh, it was the, the bottom was, was the, yeah, it was the, the bloodies. It was the bloodies. It was bottom was bloodies. bloodies. So you slept it off, woke up, you thought about it, but then you drank more and you're like, ah, fuck it. Let's well, we also announced it to the whole brunch. So you had to do it. We had to go through. <laughs> we went and got the certificate. And then the kiss shop. So you and Joanna, wait, we're going to talk about this later. Keep going. Go. We get the certificate. The kiss shop is not really available. Her and I go back to where we're staying individually because, you know, we weren't there together. Yeah. She ends up like letting me like decide not calling it off via text. Via text. Yeah. Cause she's like, Hey, I've sobered up from the bloodies. Maybe we shouldn't do it. Yeah, 100%. I was hoping at some point one of you would sober up and be like, yeah, no. Oh, I mean, part of this, part of this, the whole time while I'm drunk, I am contacting multiple lawyers to get a prenup done. Because at that point in my at life. At least you're thinking. At least you're thinking. In 2014, I actually was making pretty significant money. Yeah, you're thinking. Like, I still had a corporate job at that point. Yeah. You're like, I'm not going to marry this girl on the fly that I just met in Vegas. Well, I, don't, I met her in LA, but maybe fucking six weeks earlier. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm not going to marry this performer who is a part-time performer and works in a sex store. Like a sex toy store in ta- in That's Texas. I, I yeah, I worked at one in Alabama. Yeah, she worked at one in Texas. I'm like, she's fun. I I enjoy her. But we're fun, but we're not all marriage material. One, well, she might have been down the road. I didn't. Not something you want to jump into that quick, though. Not without a prenup. Yeah. I mean, the story was good enough. The story is amazing the way it is. I'm glad that it did not end in. I mean, a divorce story. What's su- what's super fucked up? super fucked up is she actually got fucking brain cancer. Like shortly thereafter, like fully made a full recovery. Like, Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. She's fine. Like she's fine. She's married with a kid these days, full recovery, like good. But if she had been married to me, that would have been my financial burden, Mm -hmm. which would have sucked. Mm -hmm. And also because she was how old she was, she was still in her twenties. I'm pretty sure she was still on her parents' insurance. If she was under my insurance because we were married, who knows how that would have fucking gone? Yeah. Like it all worked out well in the Everything long run. Everything worked out the way it's supposed to. That's for sure. Yeah. No. So like the, the 10 year anniversary was on the 19th. I texted her. I'm like, you know, happy anniversary to my almost wife. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm coming up on my sixth wedding anniversary. This in about three months, I'll be at my six year wedding anniversary. And again, people are still always so shocked when I tell them that I'm married. I don't hide it, but I also don't promote it because he's not an active part of my career. He's not in the industry. He is. I mean, you've promoted it quite a bit on here. He's a civilian. I I talk about him when I'm doing podcasts. That's the thing. Like that's when people learn about him. They're like, what you're married. Cause I, I talk about him during podcasts, but I'm on set. Or I'm, like I'm anything with like work. I don't normally mention him. Well, yeah, like hi. You're gonna be inside me today. I'm married. Like, yeah, like that's he's weird. Not involved in the industry, so there's not a point in mentioning him. And so I usually don't. But like, yeah, we're coming up on six years. And well, congratulations. You have fucking years to my months. Oh th- no, you got ten years on my six. Ten years of almost being married. She is successfully married with a kid to someone else. So oh my god, but you we had this conversation earlier. You don't want that. No. I have a vasectomy. I definitely don't want I don't that. want kids, I've decided. Same. Um, I have so many nieces and nephews, and they love me, and I love them, and I'll be able to love them and support them and take care of them and help them through high school and college because I don't have a kid of my own. I'll be able to do all those things for them. And so, yeah, that's kind of my focus. And my company is my baby, and Melanie is my baby. And that's the important I, one. I nurture it, and I take care of it, and I feed it and every day. I am totally down to be the cool uncle. Like, I, yeah. I have a niece. I just don't you know, want to be the cool uncle. Yeah, same. I am you the cool be- aunt. I am the cool aunt. I am. And I'm not only the cool aunt, but I'm the rich, bougie aunt. Like, I'm not even rich, but, like, they think I'm rich. <laughs> 
I'm the bougie rich aunt. That, like I just come into town when I want. I take the kids on vacations and then I drop them back off at home. And yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. They don't know what I do yet. I think that's going to be an interesting conversation because um, my brothers and I already had the conversation with my sisters because they would look up porn and they'd be like, oh my God, you just ruined my porn search. I was, womp, horny. Womp. I was horny and then I wasn't, right? But like my nieces and nephews, because I don't have kids, I'm not going to have the personal responsibility of having the, to explain it to them before they get upon that age. One day, my nieces and nephews that have known me for all this time are going to get on Pornhub and they're going to find me and they're going to be like, oh God, that's my fucking auntie. And... That's what I'm not really prepared for because I don't know. Because their moms know. My my brothers, my sisters, anyone, my in-laws, they know. And so, like, they're prepared. Their kids are going to come to them and say, is this Auntie Hazel? <laughs> and I don't, I don't got to deal with it. I know they're going to call me, but you got to explain it to your kid before you call me. You know what I mean? Right. And so, like, it's not my problem. <laughs> but I am worried, like... Is it going to affect my relationship with my nieces and nephews? Hopefully not. It hasn't affected my relationships with my family. Well, if it hasn't negatively affected your relationship with your family, they're the ones guiding your nieces and nephews. So unless your nieces and nephew like fucking have a short circuit and find God all of a sudden, you should be fine. Oh my God. My family's religious and they're still very supportive of me. But you're right. They might be one of those like crazy. Right, exactly. Nuts that are like, no. <laughs> Trying to ban porn in Oklahoma. Right? Ban porn in Oklahoma. Have you guys not heard of Larry Flint versus the United States of America? Like, God. At the end of the day, Oklahoma needs porn almost more than more anywhere than else. Anybody. Right. More than anybody. Oh my God, Utah. They need it more than anybody. And they were the first states to come out with that bullshit where Sheree DeVille. Pornhub is not available in the state of Utah anymore. Correct. Such a shame. Such a shit show. Hazel, I hate to do it. I hate to do it. You know, we've been going almost two and a half hours, right? You're lying. No. Matt, are you going to make me stop? I could talk to you forever, but. I mean, you're allowed to talk to me off okay. mic. It's okay. I mean, you're more than allowed to talk to me off mic. We're, I hope you guys had fun chatting with me. While we call last call, before we get you out of here. Last call? Tell the people where they can find you on the things, where they can find all your so, shit. So, Hazel Grace has a couple of new websites. Yeah, yeah. So the last time I was here, I was promoting officialhazelgrace.com. Officialhazelgrace.com has had a makeover. So if you went before, go again to officialhazelgrace.com. That's officialhazelgrace.com. Um, and so that's all of my links. That's all of my social media links, my XXX links, my cash app and payment links. That's all. Any information that you want about Hazel Grace can be found on official hazelgrace.com, but also now we have hazelgracexxx.com, which is my permanent schedule. So if you ever want to know where I am in the world at any given time, you can go to hazelgracexxx.com to check out my schedule. Um, and then we have, um, I'm going to be hitting a new few states before I move on from hazelgracexxx. I'm going to be hitting North Carolina and Arizona this year. Those are new states. I will also still be in Texas, Florida, LA, New York, Utah, but we're going to be adding um, a couple of new states like North Carolina and Arizona. So I'm super excited about that. Um, We also have Inmelanin.com. Please, please check out Inmelanin.com. It is um, my production brand. We only shoot women of color. We specialize in highlighting the beauty of brown all the way from light tan to dark chocolate. So please check out Inmelanin.com. At the very least, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Always a pleasure. Same. We'll do it again soon. I mean, we're still. Better. I mean, we're still hanging out as soon as we wrap. I just don't want to edit anymore. And tomorrow, right? Yes, Jesus. He's not getting away from me. You know, if we hook up, you're going to have to talk about it on air, right? I mean, are you prepared for my criticisms? Yes. Okay. Well, on that note, drink up, motherfuckers. <laughs>